Hello, and welcome back to GaryCon, where we are just about set to launch another game of Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll be your DM for the next session. Uh, my name is Mike Merles, and I am the Franchise Creator Director on Dungeons & Dragons. And joining me tonight are four fine players, uh, who we'll now introduce, starting to my left. I am Beast, I am playing Odin's son. I'm Joe Manganello. I am playing Archon the Cruel. <laughs> My name's Luke Gygax, founder of GaryCon, and I'm playing Melf. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> How do you follow Melf? Uh, hi, I'm Matthew Mercer, uh, and uh, I'm playing Skullcarver Quiche. <laughs> now, there's one piece of information people might not realize from just your character names, though perhaps for some of our uh, Characters I've DM for in the past, but this uh, the characters are all 18th level, oh, so you yes. can expect some fairly cosmic going on goings on tonight, as we follow up on the adventure that we played last summer at the Founders and Legends event yeah. uh, in Los Angeles. So, once more, as with the start of that adventure, the four of you find yourselves in the reception hall of Morden Kanan the Mage. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the most powerful wizard in all of the world of Greyhawk, and perhaps even one of the most powerful wizards in all of the multiverse. Morden Kanan sits before you in his throne, looking at all of you, each of you in turn. All of you have received a summons. Two of you had rendered aid to Morden Kanan nine short months ago, and find yourself once again in his presence. Two of you are new to working with the Mighty Mage, and perhaps or perhaps not have adventured before with Melf and Archon. Uh, why don't we take a second and explain race and class and describe yourself and introduce yourselves as you would when you first met. Uh, as you enter the chamber, already there before you arrive, kind of waiting in the corner, you see this darkened hood of almost like sackcloth, thick material that's obscuring what looks to be uh, most of a head except for the reddish uh, uh, kind of tinted rose end of a dragonoid snout. Smaller than expected, as the creature leaps off of the stool it was on and only stands about three feet tall, this uh, mostly albino kobold death cleric comes stepping forward, this claws of the feet scraping individually against the small marble floor ahead of it as it brings this large staff creaking across, dragging its body towards you before it looks up at the other rivals and goes, Where well, are it's nice to meet you. <laughs> and you are? I'm Melf, Melf of the Green Arrow. Hmm. I have some skill in fighting, but primarily I focus on wizardry. Uh, I have done many great deeds, and my goal is to advance wheel throughout the realms. And I have worked with Mordenkainen many times. And uh, I understand that uh, Morden Kanan may have a different take on what is appropriate with the balance. Mm -hmm. But thus far, I've been able to aid him in bringing much goodness to the world. Mm -hmm. To the worlds, to the realms, and to the planes. And thus that is why I'm here today. Even though some of you may not be uh, uh, associates I'm less accustomed to working with. <laughs> Mortality is relative. You dare tear me away from my work again? And the wings of this huge chimera flap inside of the hall, and on top of it is a seven-foot red dragonborn wearing black armor, blazing uh, Tiamat's sigil, and holds up uh, a smoking green withered hand. <laughs> tear you away from your work, you say? I merely issued a summons. You were the one who answered. There is no compulsion or magical quest laid upon you, yet you still return. The paths of weal and woe sometimes intertwine in ways we cannot predict, such as the way of the balance. And... I am Odin's son. Valhalla awaits us. <laughs> six five six six, wearing leather, majestic beard. Leaning on, a, leaning on a spear with a shield over his shoulder. 
One hopes that perhaps Valhalla can wait until the deed I lay before you is complete. Two of you stood within this hall not but nine months ago and spoke with me about a strange threat, a threat from a world beyond this one, a threat from beyond all worlds, one that perhaps promises to plunge not just Orth, but all worlds into darkness. You quested and succeeded, returning to me shards of utter darkness, the bizarre realm from which few have returned. In fact, these two number among the perhaps less than two dozen that have entered that place and returned alive. Impressive. Though others have returned, just not alive. Mm. And perhaps in times of where life faces great needs, death must be at hand to render aid. For without life, there perhaps could be no death, mm. as we shall see. The shards you gifted to me most generously. I have spent these in the past nine months studying. And why if what I have found has troubled me greatly. Not but a month ago, I dispatched adventurers across this realm to track down locations where the force of this strange malignant darkness seeks to push its way into this world. This world you perhaps know, perhaps do not know, sits at the crossroads of many planar paths. Those who adventure uh, to the inner planes from the outer often find themselves first here. And those who adventure from the inner planes to planes yet unfound or undreamed of often find their first steps taking place here, upon Earth, upon this world. I believe that there's an incur incursion from this place of darkness that it seeks to come into mystic resonance with this world as it has already done with others and drown it in endless darkness. And then from there, use the planar crossroads centered on Worth to spread elsewhere. But of this I am not yet quite certain. There are the signs and portents tell me that this perhaps is the truth, but still more evidence I seek. And an entity that if it can be called and destroyed could perhaps put an end to this incursion. You remember the last time you ventured forth, the strange robes, the thuribles, Yes. The incense, the horn? Yes. I have kept these things, and now return them to the four of you to use once more to venture into this realm of ultimate and utter darkness. Not but three nights ago, an adventuring party similar to yours, though not quite half as skilled as each of you, ventured to an ancient temple high in the Yaddle Mountains, far to the north of here. They found there Durgar, dark dwarves, who labored intensely, building strange devices that these dwarves sought to use to bridge the gap between this world and the realm of utter darkness. Mm. Happily, though not without casualties, the adventuring party returned successful, having put the Durgar to the sword, smashed their foundry, and returned to me the objects that could perhaps be this world's end. If you agree, and if you do not have pressing business more needful than this task, I will send the four of you to this temple. Already two of my dear friends watch over it to ensure that nothing crawls forth. And if it does dare do so, it will be quickly destroyed by them. But the four of you are to venture inside venture to the darkened fane and descend down a long lonely shaft which will transition from this world to the realm of shadow. There, wearing the robes of utter black to protect yourselves from that harsh environment of nothing but utter death, even death beyond the passing that you enter. You must use the Iron Horn to call forth an entity. This realm has before consumed worlds not unlike this one. And gods, demigods, and other mighty beings have stood against it. Sometimes they have succeeded, but many times they have failed. You must find the resting place of one of these gods who failed. And there sound the horn and call forth the entity 
that seeks to come into resonance with this world. Slay it and end this threat. What say you? I accept. Of course, good Nelf. I will go forth. These seem like evil creatures that must be slain and that good deeds that must be supported. I'm sure my stalwart friends here will see the same. You say you'll fight for balance, yes? You understand? I, I fight for good. However, I understand that Mordenkainen looks to the balance. But I'm but one of his many that he employs. He will not be a problem then? No. Okay. Well, if darkness is to prevail, then too much death brings not new life, and the process is uneven. And eventually, if there is no more life, there is no more death. Yes. I accept. Thus must the owls be maintained. What say you, warrior? This sounds like a noble cause. Maybe I can send people to meet their makers in the name of the old gods. My gods. Maybe I will see Valhalla. Perhaps. I accept. Perhaps you will, but hopefully not until the task at hand is complete. And you? Soon this realm will be ruled by the one that I serve. Yes. But she cannot rule it if another claims it first. I will help you pave the road to which she will rule. You can count me in. We shall see. There are many paths that extend from this point forward into history. We shall see which one we follow. Very well. I have scribed a teleportation circle. He gestures and with a wave of a hand, one of the walls of this hall disappears. An illusion. You see beyond a 50-foot wide uh, teleportation circle inscribed on the floor in fine silver runes. If you wish to gather your companions, your mounts, or any of your gear, and then assemble upon the circle. And I shall send you forth to the Yato Mountains. You will meet two of my boon companions who watch over this place, and then you must enter. So we bring our war horses? And Ben, I understand you have your mount. I don't, don't recall his name, but yeah. Asoyano, move forward. Chimera moves, and you also see a, a zombie with a big two-handed, <laughs> <laughs> big two-handed great axe <laughs> stumble forward as well. Romero, move on to the circle. Romero, yeah. From Pittsburgh. I will just lead my war horse. I'm going to shoulder my shield and step into the circle. All right. I take way too long to head back to my corner and gather a sack over his shoulder and then make my way slowly across the, <laughs> the walkway. Have you stepped to the, the circle already? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait outside too. I'll move on. Okay, move on. as I walk up, I kind of stop and look up and as the hood falls back a bit, revealing more of the, uh, the albino white scales and the beady pink-red eyes looking up. You are a big one, yes. Mm. And you are a little one. Yes. Mm. Do you have a breath weapon? No, but uh, I could use a ride. The tail of the chimera moves down the little walkway. <laughs> it scurries up it with a comparatively un uncomfortable <laughs> speed and dexterity. <laughs> Asoyano it moves on to the circle. Oh, okay. Warden King. Good luck, my friends and then begins encanting the spell, teleportation. And with a sudden jolt to your senses and a, a whirling sense of vertigo, you're cast aloft into the weave of magic. You see the world twirling beneath you, the great lake of the near div flowing below you, across the great fields, fear, fury on the, the battlefields of Ayus, across the forests of the north and the towering mountains of the Yaddles, and you dive down, and just as you feel as you're about to be smashed across the face of the great mountains, you turn, twist, following the paths of the great peaks. You, you expect to feel the wind whistling through your hair, but nothing as the magic guides you. And then as you make a quick, sharp turn around a high mountain peak, you see it. A dark blot in the fabric of magic itself. Shadows and wisps of them whirling around it like water flowing through a drain concentrating down to one point, and as you take a moment to look at it, suddenly you're jolted like a slap to the face, wind howling your face, your hair caught in it as you stand in a teleportation circle. 
in a small ledge adjacent to a sheer cliff face. And you see, as you blink your eyes, as vertigo passes, where that moat was is a low, two-tiered black ziggurat. It rests on a low mountain peak directly across from where you stand. A crevasse divides the space between you and this place. Someone or something has poured stone upon stone, forming a crude bridge that spans the gap between where you stand and the peak opposite where the temple sits. The wind howls past you, cold, cutting through your cloak, your cloaks and your gear. In the distance, the shrill cry of a griffin echoes across the peaks. Clearly, we must approach the ziggurat there. That is where we must enter and then find the shaft of, that takes us and descends and transcends through the prime material to the shadow planes. Uh, I can fly. We're flying. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. It's I'm like clutching <laughs> on to the chimera for Fine. your life. Uh, I'll cast Levitate, and then I will just bring him along with me. All right. Much thanks, Melf. <laughs> And we'll, I don't want to touch the bridge. I just think that's bad news, so we're going to fly across. <laughs> Your dad was clearly Gary <laughs> <laughs> That just screamed like, danger, we'll Glad to have danger. you. Danger. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going there. Don't Sorry. touch the button. <laughs> yeah. You soar across the chasm, the gap, and approach the low, squat, black ziggurat. You see that the path across the suspicious looking bridge, yes. where it reaches the flattened peak, there is another stone ramp that leads up to the first tier of the ziggurat, mm -hmm. then a smaller one that leads halfway up the second tier into a doorway that has been carved within it. Mm -hmm. You see standing just outside the doorway are two figures, mm -hmm. and as you approach, they raise their hands in greeting. Okay, well, we get up. I guess we go for it. I will, uh, with the Spear of Zagig and with uh, Odinson and Tote, uh, approach him. All right. You see, one of them is a young, slight man dressed as an elf, green garb, green cloak, with a short sword at his belt and holding a short bow. He's wearing silver bracers, hmm, warding cane and traffics and odd friends, but that was always his way. Greetings, Melf. I am Kyoftin. Warden Kaden has bid me to guard this place. Hail Kyoftin. I am Melf. This is Odinson, Archon, and the kobold's name escapes me. Kish. Kish. Call me Kish. Kish. Good. You see the other figure. It's a gruff looking man. A little bit of grizzled beard, a wide brimmed hat pulled low, wearing a full body cloak that conceals anything he's carrying. <laughs> Don't make too nice with them, Kyo. If they come back with black eyes, we'll have to put them down. <laughs> Many have tried. Your confidence is laudatory. Don't let Merlin's uh, pragmatism, as I like to think of it, uh, drag you down. We must warn you, though, that this place, if there is a risk, yes. if, you are to be over if you are overcome by the, by the power which rests within, it may turn you against this world and its inhabitants. We are well prepared. And if that. for the greater good, we must, you must do what you need to do. I understand. I hope it does not come to that. I was never a big fan of this world anyway. <laughs> Just don't come back with those black eyes. And if one of your companions does, don't listen to anything they say. Put them down. They've got the darkness in them. And once it's in, there's no getting it out. <laughs> Understood. So, is there anything else you can tell us of our journeys? Morden Canis bid us to not enter this place. He wished us only to watch over. We are the first and last line of defense if something should go terribly wrong. Understood. Um, the doorway is relatively <laughs> small, I'm assuming. It's about uh, 20 feet tall, 30 feet wide. Oh, oh it's yeah. actually quite yeah. large. So yeah, we, can bring large. Our, we can bring <laughs> our mounts. 
then. Uh, ceiling is also... 20 feet tall. 20 feet, okay. Right. Then let us enter in with our mounts. All right. So you make your way in. You see the uppermost tier of the Ziggurat as you enter it. There's one single chamber. There are a row of pillars across the middle. And you see on the far end two flights of stairs, 10 feet wide, going down. Just large enough for the Chimera. Yeah. There's signs that there was a combat here perhaps in the past few days. There is a, uh, a row of uh, crates and boxes with tools and supplies, uh, rations. They've all been pushed around as if there was a fight here. But no signs of bodies. Any blood? A few blood stains here and there. Okay. The boxes, they were like, like reinforcements, like I mean, there was like, like I mean, there was like, a, like an army that showed up here and had their supplies here, yes. and now they're all dead. Warning, Kenny did mention that there are Duragar found here. Ah, uh, the Duragar, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, of course, the workers. And looking at the crates, it looks like uh, smelting gear, uh, bars of iron, right. and uh, other metals. Okay. Okay. All right, and then a stairway heading down. Two sets of stairways. Yeah. Uh, so they both go in the same direction. Okay. Divided in half. Essentially, it looks like a grand stairway, but okay, with cut in half order. by a wall. Okay. okay. So, this is time for marching order. Yeah. I'll take point. <clears throat> you sure you don't want the zombie minion to take point? Whatever. I'll just keep him up next to you in case you need to open a door. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't mind taking the I'll, rear if I'll follow up after Archon now. wants to yeah, take the front to. and. I'll with the big one. Yes. <laughs> Spoken like a true kobold. <laughs> <laughs> As he leaps off the, uh, the chimera, briefly mutters something under his breath and pulls a small charm hanging around his neck. Uh, and you watch as these these darkened sigils kind of slowly spin around the torso before almost absorbing into the flesh. There's a brief <gasps> inhale, and I'm going to cast Death Ward on myself. Oh. That's a good idea. Eight hours? Okay. Would, would you like one as well? Do you fear the passage of death? I cast Death Ward as well. <laughs> but you see a pinwheel of dragon heads move faster and faster. It disappears inside my chest plate. My eyes flare up. Yeah, Death Ward. I see you follow a specific queen. She's the all powerful, the originator of the universe, the one who created all of this. Yet your hand carries the will of another. You are perceptive. Then let's press on. <laughs> All right. Mm. Do you wish to take the stairway to the right or to the left? This is like Dragon's Lair. <laughs> it is like Dragon's Lair. Is there a golden light right. on either one of them? <laughs> yeah. Is it Dirk? Uh, <laughs> yep. Dirk yeah, there. Dirk, yeah. Nerds. What say you, Viking? <laughs> You're in the lead. Right. All right. <laughs> we are seeking, they said, uh, a resting place of the fallen god, yes? Yes. This was what the, the, the place we seek. Perhaps, uh, hold on, I need to confer with my deity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out um, a series of, of strange looking sharp teeth okay. that are uh, very old and kind of somewhat mildewed and throw them into a small scattering on the ground and begin to whisper, and you watch as they begin to shift and then almost magnetically form a symbol. Uh, can I use Find the Path to look for the resting place of this god? Sure. Okay. So you invoke the magic, you reach into the weave, and call upon the fundamental pieces, building blocks of reality that the gods themselves used to shape the world. As you attune to your divine magic, and call upon the power of death. You feel a path extending out in your mind, you see the stairway to the right plunging downward and turning. A hallway sweeping wide, 20 feet wide, southward. And then beyond that, darkness. A sphere of darkness. And as you watch the path in your mind, you see it extend before you. You see two eyes, darker than that sphere of utter darkness, somehow drawing you in. Come. Come, follow the path. Follow the path. To me, oh vessel of light, come. 
Do I trust those voices? They seem very trustworthy. Sounds good to me. This is the path forward. And you see beyond it, beyond the sphere, you sense is your destination. Mm. Well, looks like you're all right. Yeah. Very perceptive. I gather the teeth back up into a bag. <laughs> back bay. In we go. All right, in we go. All right. As you walk, you feel as if you come this way before, having cast the spell, you know ahead into the, into the right is the way you must go. As you head down the pass, the, the stairway in turn, you see before you, the stone here is utterly dark and black, but here and there, there are swirls of white and purple color streak through them. And though you can't be sure, every time it seems you take your eye off it and return, it looks as if those swirls are moving, almost like tentacles in an utterly black sea. Very strange. Unnerving. Um, this reminds me of other places I've been that, with the, uh, the one who shouldn't be named. I'm gonna use divine sense. Do I sense any sort of fiend, undead, desecration, consecration? As you extend your senses out and through the weave and examine the walls and touch everything, you just feel utter void, nothingness. And then you feel a pull to your right as you stand and off to your right and ahead of it. Something pulling, something drawing everything in this area to it. It feels like something from beyond this world. Not fiend or undead, something else, but something even more baleful than those. Causing this like black hole, basically, with the tentacles. Okay. Huh. <clears throat> and it's beyond this. Is this thing blocking the, the way? Is it it's blocking the hallway? It stands between you. And but when it, you and your sense that you must pass through this thing. Uh -huh. But it, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Was it on, is it on this plane or is it something that's pulling us like it's, through there? It feels like it's between planes. Uh -huh. It's on this plane extending out <clears throat> from somewhere else you've never sensed before. Mm. You've, you've been to the Nine Hells, you've been to many planes and worlds. Yeah. This yeah. is not quite like anything you've sensed before. Kind of have an apartment in the Nine Hells now. Uh, <laughs> um, and it, is this the shaft? It feels like it's somewhere beyond. Beyond. At least that's from your sense of casting mm -hmm. by the path. Okay. Um, okay. I get the sense from his description that this is the place for us to go. Yeah, I have a question. Um, zombies. They're beyond speaking, correct? But they can see, they can perceive, yep. and they can nod their head. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to tie a rope around Romero, and I command him to walk through the void. All right. So, walk, so to get you have to walk ahead, and then you can feel like, oh, it's just to the right. You just know which way to go. It's like you've been here a thousand times before. This way. And as you come around the corner. You see opening before you. It's almost like as you're heading south down the passage, you make a bit of a you know, U-turn into like the next passage over. And you see 40 feet wide extending before you is what looks like some sort of temple. There are pillars in a single row mm -hmm. where you stand. Then beyond those, two rows of pillars extending outward to a three-foot tall railing that extends out in a semicircle shape. In the middle of the semicircle, there's a gap in the railing just large enough for a human to walk through. Beyond it, it's darkness. Mm -hmm. This seems oddly familiar, though, somehow. Mm -hmm. This seems like we should don our robes and use the thurbles and proceed, and this is the strange realm that we've entered before. So you have been in this realm before? Yes, mm -hmm. on three occasions. Oh, so you are an expert. Anything we should be looking out for? Being careful of. Any information really would be extremely <laughs> helpful. <laughs> uh, many fellow creatures in this realm of negative energy and darkness. Swing at anything with tentacles. Pretty much. Okay, all right. To I like point. those directions. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Go ahead and don the cloak. Yeah, put the cloak on. Yeah, cloak, cloak, cloak for... Thurible. For, for, for cloak for Romero. Um, 
We should probably dump our beasts or no. not be sorry. <laughs> our steeds. <laughs> uh alright, so this is actually where we, we I jump off the chimera. Well at least last time I left the chimera. That wasn't a you could try, I mean, if you want to try to fashion. And Morden Kane would have had a few sets of robes. You want to oh, fashion really? something. Or sure, why not? More, life's more fun with the chimera. Okay. I, I, I agree 100%. Uh, that, that might be the next t-shirt we make. Life's more fun <laughs> with the chimera. Um, I'd buy it. We, okay, then I, 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 I uh, Archon stands in front of the chimera. I dismount, stand in front, and I motion for the heads to come down. And I stick uh, one over uh, the goat head. Uh, one over the lion head, and then one over the dragon yeah. head. It's a set of barding that Morden Keenan had uh, commissioned just for you. Oh, this is great, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, so I live thoughtful. in L.A. It's like yeah. there's so many pet <laughs> costumes all over yeah. the place. Yeah, Absolutely. why wouldn't that be in Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, of course. Uh, great, okay, so there's a chimera. I put my little chimera hood on, and um, and then I get back on. All right. Let's go. Pushing ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you approach the railing, mm -hmm. you see in the utter darkness ahead of you, the torches that you found in your last adventure, the Mordenkin has provided more to you. Yes. They give off only a very dim, pure white light, but as you enter the shadow, it seems that it's starting to push it back. Yeah. And as you head forward 20, 30, 40 feet, just before the railing, you see at the edge of the strange white radiance of these torches is a figure standing still as a statue. And its eyes, somehow against the utter blackness of this entire place, seem even deeper in their darkness. And a voice whispers to you, Who dares enter the fane of he who hungers? Petitioners or foes? <laughs> I'm gonna answer. Prince Bright Flame, champion of good, stand aside. <laughs> The flame of which you speak shall be doused if you take but one more step forward. You, who seek this path. I? Power of death. Why worship death when there are powers far greater, far beyond death? Come forward, supplicate yourself, and no power. I humbly appreciate your offer, but um, I like to finish one contract before another. <laughs> you who worships a so-called queen, turn to a greater power, become our champion. Rule rather than be ruled. <laughs> I already lead an army. And you who seeks valorous death, why lead but one life when you could lead them all? Come forward and bow. Join us. You need but one life if you live it well. <laughs> so be it. The figure stands up slowly, as if it has been seated for a thousand years, stretching itself up. And if you wish to pass, you must pass through me. Fire breath. Right, throw <laughs> <in> the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's an interesting roll here somewhere. Do you want me to? So do you want to roll separately for minions? Uh, let's just have you roll once. And roll one. Yeah, because okay. you're so good. All right, distract things. Let's see. Well, since it's Gary Con, let's see where Gary wants me to go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. All right. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So our initiatives. Uh, Fifteen for me. Nineteen. Eleven. 22. All right, well, you're yeah. all faster than the Watcher on the Precipice of Annihilation, and so on 22. How far away is he? He is about 30 feet away from you. I'm going to throw a javelin at him. All right, give me an attack roll. That would be an 18. 18 will hit. The javelin strikes true, striking the obsidian creature's upper torso. That's 12 points of damage. Okay. The javelin pierces it and looks down and grabs it and yanks it free and hurls it to the ground. 19 over the mouth. 
I will charge forward okay. using my spear to hint and uh, attempt to jam it and uh, push over the press pistol. Uh, that would be a 25. 25 will hit. All right. You lunge forth with your spear, piercing. It's like hitting as you strike it. You feel cold, numb, numbness race down the spear and through your limbs. Thirteen, 13 points of damage. Okay. Uh, do you get? Is that your one attack, or do you get? Multiple? Uh, yeah, just one attack. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. The as you do that, as you strike and as you step back, you see the black walls around you. Those wisps of energy are flowing through them, and suddenly they begin to undulate and then they lash forth at you, reaching out to grasp oh, at Archon. No, 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 no. Tentacles. Yeah. Great. One reaches for you. Uh, does a 20 hit you? No. All right, it lashes at you and you duck just in time as it whistles right above you, then fades back into the wall. And with that, it is your turn. My turn? Okay. Um, you're very close to this thing. I right? am. Okay. I'm right next to it. <clears throat> okay, then uh, I fly. I'm 30 feet away? Yep. Okay, well, uh, Asuyano flies 30 feet up, and um, I'll strike. There's. Um, what is it? Two bites and a horn? Or no? I get. Um, yeah, three attacks. One bite, one horn, one claw. All right. So, bite, horn, claw. Bite hits. Uh, probably, yeah, that's going to be a. Yeah, 24 and a 7. Does a 17 hit? 17 will miss. 17 misses. Okay, so we need an 18. Um, okay, and the third misses too. So, one bite, which is going to be. For it, that's uh, nine points on the bite. Okay. And uh, that's within melee combat for uh, for Archon now. So I'm going to rage, <laughs> reckless. Um, so this will be number one. Uh, that's a crit. Nice. <laughs> Out of the gate. That's what, yeah. Critting out of the this gate. Is, this is, yeah, it's nice that Luke gave me. Yeah. Uh, second is going to be, what do we got here? That's that's a 30. That'll hit. To hit. Okay, great. Um, so on the crit, uh, is this thing undead? Does, does that, do I get an undead feel from it? No, it's something else. It's something else. Okay, then it's let's go. It's neither alive, nor dead, nor undead. All right, then let's go, uh, I'll pump a third level Divine Smite into it. Right. So that's going to be, that's two, third, four, okay, so that's going to be four, the eight, plus the axe, <laughs> okay, so that's going to be an additional 48, um, right, so 48 for seven, 12, 12 plus five, that's 17, 17 plus... 15, 32 plus 12 is 49. Um, on a crit, it activates um, a 2d8. So that was what? That was the, what did I say? 39? 39. 39. 39 plus 11. 50. Uh, that's 50, 50. Uh, plus the hand of Vecna uh, will also double. And that's 2d8 cold. So that's uh, 11 plus 10 is 21. So Whatever, 71. say 21. 71, 71 plus 71, 16, yeah. which is my strength. So that's going to be 87. 87. And to think I reduced the hit points because I thought we'd have six players. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's 87. All right. Is that right? Was that everything? I think that's that was everything. I think that's everything. Eight plus 12. Wait, yeah, that's eight plus. 12. Well, hold on. Wait, no, that's a crit. So I double all dice. Was that just your? That was dice? just okay. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, but the two D eight. So that was. Um, so that would be twenty. I guess twenty D eight. So um, I need to roll. That was twelve. I need to roll eight more. Eight Good more. gravy. Sorry. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, I'm definitely no longer decimating. Could be a bigger <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> a smaller problem. Now we got Archon on the team, man. Seven plus uh, <laughs> eleven <laughs> plus four. Eleven plus four. It's uh, uh, fifteen. 
plus um, 14. 23, so 23 plus, what did I just say? Yeah, it's the 38 total. 38 plus 87, um, that's All right. 115? That no, is 125. One, oh, 125. That's it, 125, that's it. Oh, shit. Okay, great. Well, yep. there right. you go. 125 so you it is. <laughs> with your axe, the creature stands, again, your first blow slams into it and barely seems to notice. But your second blow is your axe crashes into it, it feels almost like you're breaking through some sort of barrier. Mm. And the momentum is, it hit, it's like hitting solid stone, then suddenly it's like transitioning from stone to water. It feels like it's plunging into this creature's true nature. You get a sense of utter darkness, flooded flashes before your eyes and vertigo as it steps back, it howls in fury. A noise that echoes through all of your minds. Everyone make dexterity saving throws. Okay. Oh. I still have a second attack that hit. That was the first one. Oh, that was, that was just that the was first the crit. one? Okay, go ahead and, and ro ro roll the damage for your second attack. We do the. Uh... Okay. Um, then let's go. I'm going to add a. I'll go with a, a second level then, um, which is going to be two plus two, so that's four. Um, so that'll be, so it's going to be 8d8. Um, 14 plus 5, okay, that's 19. 19 plus 14, 15. 19 plus 15 is 34. Um, 34 plus, 34 plus 16 49. is no, 50. 50. 50. That's 50. 50. Yeah, 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah. Okay. okay. So your second blow, it seems as this thing's almost like <clears throat> coming out of out of attunement with reality as you batter it. And then it emits the massive psychic scream that rips through all of you. Actually, give me everyone give me a uh, charisma saving throw. Charisma sorry. saving throw? Not dexterity. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you're, within, you're, you're next to me, so you oh. get a bonus because... Um, Thank goodness. You get a bonus, which is the aura of protection. You gain plus four to save. That's good. That gives me a 13. 13, that will fail. Uh, that'd be a 23. Success? 17. Fail? Um, tw 22. Ooh, that will just fail. So everybody who failed takes 22 psychic damage, ah. and on a success, take 11 psychic damage. Mm. All right, and that was on 15, and on 11, we go wow. on to our cleric. All right, as the, the echoing scream kind of blasts through everyone, uh, the cobalt quiche kind of bundles the ears up and shakes the head. No, no. <sighs> you can see the shield that's hidden beneath the billowing robe of the cloak kind of now grasping that hand as the staff spins around. And as the tiny cobalt hand grasps it, this obsidian spike kind of <laughs> pierces it out of it as a spear. Glancing over it, this, this terrible creature says, Existence without transition has no meaning. And as that happens, the eyes burn bright red, and you watch uh, as a large curve, what looks like a sacrificial dagger of burning blood apparates in the space next to the creature as the kobold walks forward, casting spiritual weapon at fifth level. Awesome. And attempting to swing at the creature with this. Go for it. Uh, so this would be natural 20. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right. Definitely not reducing hit points on the next Perfect, so that would be, uh, so at that level, that's uh, that's 48, I believe. Yep, should go on to 88 total. Very nice. The dagger strikes home. Perfect. Plus my wisdom, which is five. So uh, 48 points of radiant damage as this right. burning dagger slams down into the creature. And as my action to co to coincide with that strike, I'm going to go ahead and uh, utilize my uh, sacred flame cantrip against it. So it has to make a dex save. Right, dex save. DC 19. DC 19. It will fail. All righty. And that'll be an additional uh, 12 points of radiant damage right. as this uh, dark bolt bursts forth from the end of the spear and then transitions into light before it slams into it. All right, you hear in your mind the exultant cries of the Lords of Death. The process must be maintained, life unto death. 
Always these creatures stand against us and strike them, our minion. Yes, yes. The creature roars in pain. It seems almost like it's being, like ink being smeared across a page. Like it's like a blot, losing its coherence. It staggers, but then looks back at all of you and roars defiantly. Uh, There's gonna be one attack against each of you. Hmm. So starting Hmm. over here, uh, let's see if this hits. This will be 20 points of damage. Uh, 28. You're at disadvantage. 28? Yep, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> 20 damage. Um, uh, you are at advantage, uh, advantage against me, because I'm reckless. All right, that is going to be another 28. Uh, the, that hits, that is 20 damage, bludgeoning damage. 28 hits. I'm raging, so that's half, so yep. 10. Goes on a 10 okay. against Melf. Uh, oh, wait, no, just one attack. Uh, only a 21. Still a hit. All right, 20 <coughs> points of bludgeoning damage, and against our cleric, uh, 28 again. Wow, well, yeah, that hits. Says. All right, uh, 20 points of bludgeoning damage. 20 points of bludgeoning damage. It staggers back and away from you. Uh, again, it just seems like it's coming unbound, as if it's about to slip off into another reality. But it's still with a great, great it pulls itself together, and if the snap comes back fully into reality, I will not be so easily. Sent away. Over to here on your action. I'm gonna rage, go into beast mode. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I'm gonna run forward, draw my sword, and I'm gonna smack the hell out of it. All right, go for it. <laughs> for everyone watching at home, his name in real life is Beast. So. Does a 23 hit? 23 will hit. Does a 21 hit? 21 will also hit. Outstanding. Fifteen points and seventeen points. All right, so thirty-two total. And you have to make a strength check, where you will be knocked prone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twenty-eight. That should do it. Right. <laughs> it's like a magic number. It's like hammering, <laughs> just like a rock. As you're hitting it again, slamming into it, you could feel it's buckling under your power, but it takes root, draw, bends its knees, each attack hammers it down, but refuses to yield. And then, as you, anything else in your turn? Nope, that's all I'm doing. As it completes its attacks, it looks at all of you, and then darkness emanates from its form, engulfing all of you. Everyone please give me constitution saving throws. Plus four to anybody who's within melee range of this thing. If you're up close to it, you get plus four. That's the entire party. Yeah, okay, great. Con save, you say? Yep. All right. 31. All right, success. 14. Fail. Yeah, 14. Fail. <laughs> 22. Uh, ooh, that'll just fail. All right, so on a success. <laughs> Jeez, I rolled 22 twice on my cons, <laughs> on my save. The, um, everyone in this area is, uh, if you uh, fail the saving throw, take 22 poison damage. Ouch. If you succeeded, take 11 poison damage. Well, I'm resistant to poison because of my armor. So it's 11? Yep. Slices out of half. All right. Thanks, Green Dragon and Cloud yeah. Storm Giants Thunder. <laughs> and that brings us back over to Melf. These guys are it's pretty rough. Yeah, no um, joke. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cast a spell because. Are you gonna throw some weapon. of your famous meteorites? I, w- I was thinking that I w- yeah I was consi- I was strongly. Does everyone at, no, at home know that the Melf spells are named after Luke? That's true. Fun fact. Yeah, I'm legitimately nerding out that I'm playing in a Fun game fact. with Melf. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yes, please, Melf. <laughs> yes, please, Melf. Cast your minute meteors. <laughs> <laughs> that is you literally that? My, one of my favorite things in the world. Is like, oh, I'd like to cast my, my, my minute meteors <laughs> in the birthday <laughs> game. My <laughs> spell. Yeah. Though I wish we had a for Acid that Arrow. I, you did that interview, you mentioned you used it to disrupt concentration. I did. So I house did. rule, anyone out there, you can use, I would rule Acid Arrow while it's doing damage, the target cannot maintain concentration on a spell. Well, I like that. There we go. Fun right. fact. Very nice. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and cast my Acid Arrow. All right. And I can <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. I got a 19 plus a bunch. So that it's is be, going like, to hit. Yeah, like 30 some odd. So it looks like we'll do uh, 44 uh, acid damage immediately. That was good math. I got 19 plus 
a bunch. Yeah. Plus a bunch. <laughs> it was like a boatload would be one. Yeah. Clearly higher than 22. Technical terms. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I did uh, seven, eight, nine points of damage. That All right. Way. The acid sears into it, burning into its form. Mm. The smell, acrid smell, washes all over you. It starts to melt away in its upper chest. Its arm starts to dangle from the side precariously. Mm. Um, anything else? No, that'll be it. Okay. Archon. Okay, um, let's go. Uh, everybody's crowded up on this thing, so I can't breath weapon. I mean, I could, but I won't. Um, bite, claw, bite claw tail, bite claw tail. Um, so we've got, and the chimera is plus seven. So that's going to be 24 to hit, that'll hit, 19 to hit, hit, and then 14, so no. All right, so we're going to go bite is seven uh horn oh, horn is a d12 the die that gets no love is <laughs> uh, great axes have oh, there you go. Great i rolled axes. a one yep. so woohoo <laughs> uh that's five right five of the horn so bite horn leans in close enough gonna come in with uh archon's axe and i'm gonna go okay so i'll roll these two together and these two uh, first is going to be that's a that's a nat nineteen plus right, that's yeah gonna hit. so it's going to be like a thirty three, um, and that's a, that's a crit on the second one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Now the question is, do you want to use a spell slot to smite? This is why you multi class, y'all. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go. Let me roll damage on the first hit, yep. and then we'll we'll yep. get to that second hit. So first hit, I'm I'm just going to go. I'll pu I'll put a first level into it, and first level that's. I just did some quick math so we could go quicker. This is um, on a non undead, that's going to be 66 for the smite. So that's 10 plus 12, 22 plus 12. So that's 34 for the radiant damage. So to save you from having to make a decision on this, the critical smite, as you leap forward, you bring your axe crashing down the, as you slam into this thing's form. The shock goes down your arms. But then everyone hears in their minds a keen, piercing wail, and you almost fall over as the momentum, as your axe suddenly goes from having crashed into something as stout as obsidian yeah. to nothing being there. Oh. And it disappears. Whoa. And the wisps in the wall all stop moving, and everything goes quiet. And in your mind, as you think of the path that you seek, there is no more barrier in front of you. You see, oh, you know, right ahead there should be the head in the wall. This the Duragar blasted a hole in it. As you remember this place from your spell, as you know which way to go. Okay. Well done. That's very good. Uh, very nice. Yes, you're strong. We'll <laughs> <laughs> work on our handshake. <laughs> but then again, we just met. We did. Well, right. we didn't see anything. It's okay. Uh, this way, apparently. All right, we follow the kobold. All right. <laughs> We're following an forward. albino three-foot kobold. Damn right you are! <laughs> yeah, in a black robe, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see in the back, what maybe at one point was a wall 40 feet wide. It looks like maybe there's another wall jutting out, but now it's all just rubble that's been cleared away. There's uh, signs that someone or something blew up this wall to clear a wide path. And you see ahead a chamber, and in the middle of the chamber, a shaft that has been, and debris pushed to each side. It looks like the shaft that was once from here. Someone has dug and torn into it to widen it out. And with the first, as you peer over, 10, 20 feet or so, the shaft is now been enlarged to be about 20 feet wide. And as you look down, it transitions from Earth to just inky darkness. Ah, this sounds like the transition point. And you see rungs crafted the same black rock Start above, it looks like someone has placed them here. They are driven into the earth and then seem to float in the darkness itself, forming a ladder that plunges down. And you feel the cold through the robes you've donned, the familiar draining cold of the realm of annihilation that the two of you have visited in the past. Before we press on, um, is anyone feeling a bit pained? Uh, yes. Um, I have suffered. And uh, let, let the dark gods that push me forward bind your wounds. 
I'm going to go ahead and cast Cure Wounds on you at third level. Um, I'm down 43. Okay. Uh, 17 for you. Right. I'm going to do fourth level for you. And be 25 hit points for you. Thank you. I was wounded, yes. I could use some help. At the third level for you. All right, that is 15, uh, 20 for you. Awesome. And I will use a second level slot on myself. That's a 10 for me. Okay. You stand on the precipice looking down. You have a sense, too, as you look down, ah, this, this looks familiar. This looks like it's the path, the one you saw. You just have a sense this is the right way to go. This is the right way to go. <laughs> Uh, however, I um, don't know. The further we go in here, the less comfortable I feel leading the way. Uh, perhaps uh, you, oh, large one, could uh, mm-hmm. go first. Well, first of all, it's Archon. Archon, uh, sorry. <clears throat> it's just... RK. It's okay. People don't mispronounce my name all the time. Uh, I'm going to send the zombie ahead. All right. The zombie starts climbing down the ladder. Mm-hmm. Takes one step down. Do you have any way to communicate with the zombie as it goes? I just say stop, hold, okay. <laughs> stop. Yeah, okay. that's it. So it begins climbing. Verbal. As it heads down, you see it disappears into the darkness. Come back. It starts climbing, you see it emerge from the inky darkness below. Stop. Can we only fly th- by it? The only, oh, 20 feet above it. <coughs> so this is like a... Like a shaft. Yep, just goes down. The okay. only light that's functioning here, if you have magic weapons, any items that shed light, they are no longer functioning. The only light is coming from the strange torches that Morden Kane uh, gave you. They are almost like sparklers, the light they give off. It's pure white. It's a little hard on the eyes. Yeah. A radius of 20 feet. And the torches themselves sputter and spark as they slowly burn, giving off no smoke. Okay. But I can, I mean, I can fly the chimera down the shaft. All right, so I hold the zombie there, and then I just hover it down the shaft, and I get to a place where there's, I guess, like what, like a bubble of darkness or like some sort of layer of darkness, and just kind of hover over the top? Yeah, because basically you've got, well, it's the torch light. You can only oh, see 20 light. feet down. Oh. So with the, the zombie going down, then. Okay. I have 60 feet of night vision, and can it see? No. It's this magical, magical darkness. The mm. fun kind. Okay, well, we were told to defend, descend the shaft. Yeah. To the realm of shadow. Mm-hmm. So, um, I grab the zombie and put the zombie on the back of the chimera, <laughs> and you're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. I'll fly down. Who, does, yeah. You also, you're, yeah. you're hoofing it again. <laughs> can you levitate or fly or? Uh, I can do this the old-fashioned way. <laughs> put the torch in my mouth. Oh. All right. Okay. Good do. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll All right, take the I'll ladder. Fly. I'll take the long way. All right. As the two of you flying, heading down the shaft, you can see it opens up. There suddenly, you see all around you just the radius, the 20 foot radius yes. of the strange white light of the torch, and nothing else beyond that. You seem to be in a much a wide open space. And you can see above you strange black rock, again, veined with those strange wisps of purple yes. and white, a 20 foot wide hole with the rungs of the ladder hanging on the side. And you can see up ahead your companions slowly making their way down. Okay. Hover and wait for them to, you know, I don't want to be more than about 10 to 20 feet lower than they are, like pace myself. You sense as you're approaching, again, it's almost like deja vu with each step. You, oh, this is the way, this, and then you realize, oh yes, and then the shaft opens, then drops about 100 feet down to the floor of the cyst of annihilation. All right, now, does the ladder descend entirely to the base, or it just drops 100 feet? It's 100, basically it's opening into the ceiling of this place, mm. 100 feet above. <clears throat> okay. So as soon as I get to the bottom rungs with you, I go like, all right, I miscalculated. <laughs> Perhaps a ride would be uh, sufficient? Yeah, hop on. Okay. All right, so. I'm fairly strong. I can probably carry the Odinson and just yeah descend. 
That's very nice of you, Mel. Thank you. <laughs> hey, so He's a big load. <laughs> encumbrance. Check. Applying <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. encumbrance. Yeah. Yeah. Good turn. <laughs> Does Odinson count as an improvised weapon? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to throw a Viking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Good plan. You're going to drop a Viking at it. <laughs> as you settle down and approach the floor, again, only that 20 foot radius around you is lit. That light, it's giving all of you just a slight headache. Yeah. Something about that pure that white light is just off. It's just it's yeah. very harsh on the eyes. Yeah. And as your bubble descends, you see looming above you, coming out of the darkness, a to the top of a tower, uh, an obsidian. Okay. In the middle of the roof, crenellated rooftop, circular tower, about 20 feet across, so almost exactly the radius of your light. Mm -hmm. You see a trap door. It looks like black wood, framed in silver. Seems almost too perfect. Let's go towards that. All right, <laughs> floating <laughs> down to the top well. of the tower. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> yes. We must be destined to go here. Anyone want to detect magic on this doorway? Is anyone? Well, since you're asking. I, I get a bad feeling about pretty doorways. Why? They break just as good as the ugly ones. How <laughs> <laughs> about it? Right. <laughs> I'm going to call you. I don't know. Now. I'll go ahead and burn a detect magic at the encouragement of my other right. party members. You sense incredibly powerful abjuration magic mm. sheaths this entire place, okay. All right. warding the baleful essence of the darkness against, uh, warding away the baleful essence of the darkness. Mm. I'll, I will share that information. Okay. Wonderful. All right. <clears throat> I. I'm not good at detecting whether there's mechanical traps of any kind. Okay. Just in case, uh, magical traps, perhaps. But Someone have a good investigation score? Um, yeah, actually, I have a great investigation score. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a little bit better than I thought. You're hired. All right. As you're <laughs> standing on the tower, looking, yeah. Yeah. you see what's off the distance, like almost like a flash of light. <laughs> One and then another in the distance. I have a 23 for investigation at looking at the trap door. All right, look at the trap door. Um, you don't notice any trap. It's got a simple latch, it uh -huh. seems like, to unlatch. It looks very straightforward. Okay. While these flashes are happening, I kind of step over to the edge of the crenellation and stare as intently as I can in the darkness to see if, if I make out any like shapes or anything in particular to these flashes beyond just being a point of light. Sure. Give me a uh, wisdom perception check. You got it. <laughs> 14. 14, all right. Um, <clears throat> you see one flash in the distance, and then another one. You can barely make out some sort of like quadrupedal shape, misshapen with maybe long serpentine limbs in front of it, the light flash of light around it, but then it's gone. There are a bunch of very um, nasty, confusing things out there that's at the towers. Probably the safest stranger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Let's lift the hatch then. Okay. I'll lift right. the hatch. Ah. Are you going to? I. Uh, oh, Romero. Yes. I'll stand back. I grab your hand <laughs> with this like flaming green necrotic. <laughs> Let the zombie. Romero. All right. So he stumbles over and opens the door. The trap door opens. Mm -hmm. You see below the glaring, painful light of your torches. A empty chamber, stone, some of the same black stone here, but directly below you, down below, is another trap door, identical to the one. <laughs> We're going to do the same scientific yeah. method over again. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, want to I think my again. detect magic is still working, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Look. Heading on down. Yes, yes I'll, fly on, I'll fly on down rapidly, make sure my magic, magic spell is still working, look. You sense even stronger abjuration magic here, okay. especially focused on the trap door. And I will share that with the group. Okay. And uh, I will use investigation to physically inspect uh, with a 29. 
This one, as you look at it, inspect it, you see there are, and with your detect magic, you can see the magic flowing through it, and you realize, looking up, that there's a sympathetic link between this trapdoor and the next one up. It looks like to open this one, you'll have to close the one above you. Oh. oh. I'll share that, and we'll fly, invite everyone down through, I'll fly up, close the trapdoor, right. fly down. As soon as you close the trapdoor, the lights, any light sources you're carrying, yeah. spring to life, your dark vision returns, yeah. and you just see the torches are just like barely sputtering, giving off little sparks. Right. Great, great. And you feel suddenly kind of warm. The robes you're wearing feel uh, heavy and burdensome. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, I'm gonna take the robe off, put it in the bag of holding. Okay. Mm. And I also put this in your bag. I don't sure. have as much space, and to be fair, I've been dual cloaking it for too long. The trap door opens up from the floor. You see a scaled hand pushing it open. Mm. Oh. Visitors. Mm. And you see a frog-like creature clutching an iron ladder looking up at all of you. Big bulbous green eyes. On its shoulder, a small monkey chitters. Mm. Eons since Eddie have come here. <laughs> Be ye seekers of power or petitioners of the dark. Seekers of power. Yeah. <laughs> come, come, warm yourselves in my domain and tell me of your travels. It shuffles down the ladder, hops down, and you see below a chamber uh, lit. It looks like a continual flame spell. It's giving off no heat. And this creature, big bulbous frog like humanoid, big eyes, and the monkey climbs in its head and looks up at you. <laughs> Wearing voluminous red robes with a golden belt. And it sits on a stuffed chair. And you see there's a couple couches on the side. There's another trapdoor on the floor. And there are bookshelves on the opposite wall. Come, come, so that I may record your words. Visitors to this place. <laughs> and then one looks up at each of you. Strange and gracious denizen of this. Uh, Whatever this is. Resist. Brave you are to come here not knowing what it is you enter. But I also happen to not know what uh, lives Which? here. What do you call yourself? <laughs> My name? Call me what you wish. Once I wore a name, and then I changed it. Then changed it again when that one, the one with the mind of metal the machine, planted his spire within our realm. From pure chaos I came, from pure chaos one day I may have to return. But for now I wait, and I watch here at the precipice of annihilation. My mind wanders many paths. Yours wanders one. In a place of transition from life to death, O oh, seeker, seek ye a realm beyond death. The end of all things. Does this bring you here to the cis? That is a very long name. Mm. Is there a shorter one we can refer to you as? <laughs> <laughs> you may call me friend. Hmm. We keep strange friends indeed. Why not? Okay, friend it is. The monkey chitters, runs over his shoulder, across his broad squat head. Mm -hmm. Well, friend, mm -hmm. we've come to kill a god. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you seek a god to slay. Many gods have come here to protect their domains, the words they have shaped. Some have succeeded, some have failed. But they do not cross over, they stay. I hear them when I sleep, they whisper. They dream of worlds long lost, untold. One of these gods you seek? Yes. <laughs> Tell me, from what world do you come? The world of Earth. <laughs> I come from the first plane of nine hells. No. <laughs> the realm of Asmodeus? Is it to he? Your symbol looks not like his. It is not. In fact, I serve the one 
who seeks to stop his cycle of destruction, the five-headed dragon goddess Tiamat. Oh, she is a goddess now. Good for all five of her heads. <laughs> yes, no point in letting the jewels of the reality slip from her fingers and let those of this place seize them. And you, what is it you seek? I sense doom around you. One who follows a path. One only knows where it will end. I know where my path will end. It'll end gloriously in battle. <laughs> so one hopes. And you, you have tread this place before. Yes. Smell it upon you. How? I am a powerful out. force of good and the gods protect me. And we work to maintain the balance in Earth. Mm. So the balance you seek, a god you seek. So we will, we will be successful. We shall see. Those who come here, none spoke of defeat or doom. None. But not all return. Some do. Perhaps you will. Perhaps you will come back here through my tower when your quest is complete. We shall see. We shall see. Some do sometimes do not arrive with the can-do attitude of man. Uh, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me then, how may I help you? For I am as I have named myself, your friend. <laughs> A friend. <laughs> we must traverse from our plane to the shadow planes, and we must call forth one of these gods. You would call a fourth one to battle yes. it? And to we must, it? And we must destroy it. Ah. You know the way. I sense the stench of the gods upon you and the insight they offer. But I can offer to you a key to this place, safe passage through it, though I can offer you no more protection beyond that. Will you accept? Uh, I have come to know in my travels that there is rarely such guidance granted without a trait of some kind. What do you wish from us? The merest trifle. Uh. Just some of your light. Some of the light you bring to this place. Just a little. Where is this iron horn that we were told of? Oh, that was with the, the, we uh, have the, we have the gear that we're traveling yeah. oh, right, right, right. from the pole. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, well, I want to inside check this thing, see if I believe him or not. All right, go for it. Um, 12. You seem pretty honest. Okay. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some light. Stop speaking in riddles. What do you want? Your light? Like one of these? <laughs> Shake the torch. <laughs> Let's say I break torch. Is, is there something from Arcana that I can detect what he means by that? Sure, yeah, you can go ahead and make a check. Right. Uh, 30. Yeah, he think, it's, he's gesturing at you. Like, you think he means maybe part of, like, your souls? Do I feel like he's going to draw down my essence and lower my power levels? Per se, by doing such a thing. No, it seems that with a right. thirty, the way he's talking, mm -hmm. he's looking at you. It seems as if he wants some of the natural light that might be lingering on you. Mm -hmm. But maybe it comes, oh. maybe a little bit of your soul comes with that too. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah that's a great. I have just enough soul. I'm not really looking too much. Yeah, torch. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Because uh, hmm. <laughs> this guy's around. Uh, Am I not friend? You are friend. We are not questioning that name given. You, your entire purpose is to carry your soul untouched after a glorious death to Valhalla, yes? You are correct. If Odin didn't want my soul this big, he wouldn't have made it this big, so I'm not feeling it. Mm, big soul, I like that. <laughs> you, soul who is already spoken for by many things, it would seem, would be dangerous to lose more of yours, yes? You're right. Your mine is dedicated to Celestian. 
But I mean, that narrows it down, doesn't it? Um. Hmm. And perhaps another bargain we could strike. Perhaps. A favor, each of you. Pledge to me a favor, equal in magnitude to the counsel I give. Should it prove worthless, then you owe me a worthless favor. But it should prove to preserve your lives. Great shall be the favor you owe me. The monkey crutches, sneers in each of you. Does the monkey have a name? <laughs> oh, he calls himself Foe. <laughs> this is Great. Me. We're gonna fight that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Frogman, let me remind you, you are in no position to make demands right now. That is an odd. Stands for a guest? Have I not welcomed you into my home, in this hostile realm, this system annihilation? Have I not given you the warmth of my fire and the wisdom of my counsel? And have I not stayed foe's hand? The monkey capers back and hisses You have been speaking in non-stop riddles since we came down this ladder. Now speak up. Give us the information. For the favor. Offer your favor. And I shall show you mine. Is what? this not reasonable? It, it is quite reasonable. Uh, if you could at least let us know what favor is to be presented before we accept. Hmm? Many in wending are the paths of destiny that one such as I, born from chaos, face. I cannot say, but I will pledge you this. The favor shall take always the form of a task. A task that shall by no means Within the judgment of Pah Primus himself. <coughs> I hate that name. I shall let him and his kind, as much as I hate them, I shall let them judge the validity of this oath. The fact that it makes him contort in pain to make such a deal, I find it very. <laughs> fun and <laughs> kind of into it. When I contact you, I shall bid ye seek the Hall of Concordance within the Lady City at the center. And there we shall strike our bargain. With all the wisdom I've taken in this life where it sings behind the balance, I'm in. I agree. Very well. I will agree to a favor that is as valuable as your advice. Very well. I don't like agreeing to things to which I don't know the terms. I have a very low wisdom, so I'm willing to agree. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this over with. Very well, do you pledge? Let's get this over with. Do you? Fine. 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 The curse in my roots, I shall strike our contract. <laughs> very well. Seek the path from this place. I shall. Reaches in to his robes, pats around. Six. Ah, oh, yes, you bear the Therabels. Five. One who sponsors you is. No, it could not be the mage himself, could it? That is not information that you have traded for. Ah! I mean, with my own words. Clever, I'll forgive you that. Reaches into his robe and pulls out a ball of incense. Silver. Mm -hmm. Bend this within your throat. It shall show you the true path. The power, the gods have no power here. They have guided you this far. But their spell will be twisted and warped. They lead you to doom. Beware the lights. They are lures. There are creatures here. Parasites. From the folds between the planes. They come. They devour the light in the dark. Beware them. Strike no light as you travel. Trust only the incense. Follow it. It shall take you to the pit where rests the god that failed. There are many that have failed, but this one is known as the one that failed. For its defeat is matched by no other. Do I trust these words? <laughs> 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 That's my check. Oh. 
Uh, still, uh, 15. He seems as genuine as a bloated frog humanoid with a monkey clawing around on his shoulder. Yeah. Great, great. Good, Good enough for me. Nothing yeah. shady about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tuesday. I don't trust anyone with little monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good way to live. I, just, I don't trust halflings, <laughs> and I don't trust <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> I feel there's a story behind that. <laughs> uh, bad dates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where is the where is the path? Where do we begin? Ah, at the base of my tower. Take us there. Mm, I must rest. Oh, Trapped on below. My God. You too may rest, but do so below. I have no desire to be troubled any further by outsiders. Uh, Force me to speak. It's We have no I'm desire to stay and rest here. We could charge up. Uh, we actually may have a small desire to stay here. Thank you for your hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> then below with you. Open not the door until you are ready to leave. Once it is opened, you cannot return to this place. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. All right, thank you. The good news. Friend. Yes, and foe. The monkey crawls up on his head and I have no, I have no reason to thank foe. Mm. Thank you. All right, second. Okay. You have a name now, and names hold power. And I walk over towards the camera. All right. All right, so, so what do we need? We long rest uh, I here. probably could use some healing while we're going to rest. So. Yep, okay. so you yeah. head downstairs. We'll a long rest. Good. Okay. Bare stone room, stone floor. Your mundane light source is continuing to function at full capacity. Right. Your dark vision is still functioning. The trap door slams shut above you. Okay. You taking a short rest? You get short or long? Uh, long rest or heal me up, but yeah, I was down like 40 hit points. So. Yeah. Well, if we want to use, it depends on how pressing we feel this is to continue, or what may. Yeah. We feel pretty safe here, and there isn't, you know, a time pressure. Well, we uh, have a, we have a, we have a watchdog. I mean, I can trance four hours. I'll be fine. Yeah, of course. I mean, then long rest is then my wheelhouse. Yeah, well, yeah. If we can take a long rest, we might as yeah. well try to long rest. Let's give it a whirl. Cool. Yeah. All right, take a long rest. Go ahead. You settle in. For a few hours of rest in this timeless realm. Rejuvenate your spells. That's right. Well, the good news is, if his information is not as useful as we hope, then the task will be equally uh, adjusted. Yes. So, good. Good choice of words. I was not born the wisest. However, you cannot fool me twice. I was not born the most intelligent. So, good team. I have no patience, especially for tiny monkeys. <laughs> you now know the dungeon to build to destroy our cup. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Gnomes, halflings, and tiny monkeys. monkeys. And tiny monkeys. Did smell like too. Hairless pets, dribbles, yes, yes. any of that stuff. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not amused. All right, then. <laughs> kind of odd. We have the velour, velour palace of the Disco Emperor this year, so perhaps we could incorporate that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next year. He loses his mind. All right. As we wake up from our, our long rest, I just keep an eye on Odinson. Uh, is there any sort of waking ritual? You seem very. You know, in my at least in my observations, uh, fervent and bent towards a certain belief. Do, do you have any sort of ritual you go through in the morning? Yeah, I grab a shield and a spear. Let's go kill something. <laughs> I learned all I needed to know from that assessment. <laughs> he is a few words. I admire that. His right. actions speak for him. So I, um, I take out my pack. Uh, or one of the, I guess, uh, what, I, have, I have like a saddle bag on my, my chimera. Um, they're, just, they, they're just full of meat, because I've got to keep this thing going. Yeah. So I just like throw tons of meat. It's grotesque watching this thing eat. I have to feed all three heads. And, yeah. Uh, the goat eats the meat, too. I mean, they'll eat anything. So. 
Just keep feeding yes, the, the meat. I stand as far away as possible so as not to be confused for yes. one of these <laughs> meals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's filthy. Yeah. It's entirely possible as a kobold sized creature. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do you even see quiche anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Um, all right, so we're rested up. Mm hmm. Okay. There is a door. There's a trap door above you, and there's a door at the base of the tower here. Presumably pulling on those robes once more. Yes. Gearing yes. up. And pulling on the robes. Suits. Well, strap armor on, because yep. you can't yeah, don't yep. sleep in. I'll go ahead and do a little play. investigation on the door. And that would be a 27. Um, it seems to get warded with powerful adjuration magic. Okay. The walls of the place feel just normal. It's a little cool in here. But when yeah. you touch the door, it's almost painfully cold. Mm. Nice. Painfully Seems cold. familiar. Yeah. Yes, this is to be expected. This is exactly where we're to be going. This is the place that we've tried before. Welcoming. I'll cast <laughs> Death Ward on myself again. <laughs> As do I. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> now, um... You have the incense they handed to you, the balls. Yes, so we do. Yeah. Yeah. This is important. Whoever is in the lead must have the incense and sway it before them in the thurible. Uh, apparently, the words that the strange frog creature was speaking, it, there is uh, illusions or misperceptions, and this will dispel them. That is the advice that he gave. If we trust him, that's we should use this. In the, in the four, as we advance. So the bearer needs to recite these words? Just, as far as I know, uh, just to swing the thurible and put the smoke to cover the ground before, okay. and then pass through that smoke will reveal the true path. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. I'll All hand right. it to him. So, um, with Wait. my offhand, the non undead hand, um, I'm going to. Light the incense. I did a light. I did light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that. Yeah, yeah. I mean the medieval. Yeah. Yeah, the medieval. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so I get back on top of the chimera and I start swinging it over his head and reciting yeah. the magic words. I said the words. Yeah. 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 Sort yeah. of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We start moving down the hallway. Lighting any of the torches? The torches no. are giving us the wrong information, so no, we must trust the incense. Does mm -hmm. anybody have night vision? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah? No. 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 Okay. Um, um, well, I'm up front, so I can see, We, the three of us can see night vision. Does that mean yeah. you want to follow in the back to the torch so you're not throwing? Do you want to walk with the, with Odinson, or shall I guide him? Uh, I'll walk with Odinson. I will follow in the back, protecting the rear. You take the front. Four. Okay, cool. So the four of you open the door. Mm -hmm. As you open it, you feel that cold wash right over you. And there are howling winds whipping to and fro outside. As you push your way out, the, though the winds howl around you loudly, the incense smoke sweeps around you, forming a shell of sorts. Yes. You don't hear the wind, but you don't feel anything touching you. The it's utter darkness, but you can see as your eyes adjust to the complete inky blackness, you see the vague outline of your companions in front of you or behind you, limbed in gold, faint flickering golden light. And where incense smoke, you can see it swirling around you, a purplish light cloaking everything around you in a 20 foot radius. And you see on you, the, uh, below you, the ground. It's a dull, black, rough surface, pitted here and there, small holes, no more than a few inches deep, as if some something came passed through and smashed itself, falling debris or something pitted this place, or maybe just the howling wind. Though it howls below, without howls around you, you can't feel anything. Everything is calm within the aura of the incense. And it glows a soft silver light in the thurible, emitting the purple smoke. And you see the smoke as it forms the dome around you seems to reach off 
forming a faint path through the darkness ahead of you. You see now and again flashes, again, of that light that you saw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trust the incense, beware of the lights. Yep. Strike no lights. If we're trusting the frog. The other option is. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. All right. Uh, where does the incense tell us to go? All right. It's forming a winding path in front of you. Okay. I'm going to start winding down this path with the camera. Follow it along. It's almost like blood in water is oh. forming like this purplish haze that streaks out in front of you. And as you follow it, it's almost as if the and the spherical dome around you is just reabsorbing it and then stretching up further like a tentacle or a tendril emerging from it. And as you push ahead, you see again in the distance and nearby those flashing lights, almost as if they're blinking in a pattern, blinking now and again. And as you're walking, you sense a cyclopean mound, almost like a small mountain to your right you can't see it, you just have a sense there's something vast and huge, long forgotten, looming to your right. But you're skirted again, just keeping down to this path, the pitted gray and black floor of this place. An uneven ground, but almost undulating as if it was water frozen in place and turned to snow. The, as you continue each step, your footfalls are at times muffled it almost sounds like the sound around you is being drained. And other times, every step sounds like a great clatter and crash echoing through this entire place. And again, you see more of the lights flashing. Mm. The, the, the pattern, does it look like they're communicating with each other? I mean, intelligence uh, investigation check. Okay, not my highest step. Right. Uh, right, that's good. It's a flat four. <laughs> I got a 20. <laughs> it seems as if, yeah, these things are talking to each other. Almost as if like wolves howling to each other as they hunt. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My roll was not very good. Okay. <laughs> it was 11. 11. His was much better. So you continue to follow the path. And again, as you're walking, at one point, single file, looking about, seeing the flashing light. You notice all the lights are to your right. And one of you, Melp, as you sort of just gaze and look to the right, you see that just a foot to your left is a massive chasm oh. where the earth drops down. But the path edges along it, then strikes and turns away from it. But you Share see... Share the information. <laughs> so you think of wolves, you think of how they communicate. Yeah. You sense, it looks like the pattern of lights starting to surround you. and slowly drawing closer, like a net that has surrounded you and is closing in. Wonderful. Like, like a child, Keish kind of just grabs the edge of Odinson's armor and kind of just pulls a little closer. <laughs> okay. So this path is winding. I mean, it shows a winding path, yeah. but it's all, and it's along the ground. Like, what would you say the, you know, the diameter of the, 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 the path or the, the created by the, 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 aura? the incense? Yeah, is it surrounding kind of like in a feet circular across. image yeah, like around, circular around the, the, the incense? Yeah. So it's, so basically, it's like you have okay. the dome that you're traveling in, which is yeah. centered on your thurible, yeah. and then part of the energy of the dome is reaching out and showing you this path. Showing the path ahead to stay yeah. here. Um, <clears throat> I fly up about five feet. All right. Five, ten feet. I get up off the ground a little bit. As you fly up, you can see the... It's as if the sphere around you is sort of lifting up around okay. you. Okay. And you can see the path that it dies down to the ground. But the path is still on the ground. Yeah, it's reaching out down towards the stone. Okay. All right. Um, so these things are starting to form a circle. Yes. Oh, man. This is bad. We have to break rank. We're going to have to, I mean, if we get surrounded by these things, we're going to need somebody on the outside, I think. Or we just go back to back and destroy them all. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm strangely okay with that plan as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's stick together. Yeah. Let's stick together and go for yeah. it. Right. Okay, I'll come I back down to the ground. <laughs> All right. Pushing ahead. Mm-hmm. The path again, still winding. Okay. The, leaving the chasm behind, you strike out. At one point, you can hear almost what sounds like the distant clatter, almost of glass breaking endlessly off to your left, just as if someone or some 
thing is just dropping panes of glass, one smashing on top of the other. And again, the path pulls away, you leave the sound behind. But still, the lights keep coming in. You see five of them flashing around you now, forming their circle around you, coming in closer and closer. They're drawing in, you think it'd be another minute before they are close enough mm -hmm. that they might come mm -hmm. to the purple radiance around you. Yeah. Does anybody need to buff up anything before this happens? Yeah, it's a good, good thought. Can I ascertain as the nature of this realm and the creatures within it? Would can I ascertain as to their essence being possibly repelled by magic that repels cr like creatures of life or in a similar space? Sure, yeah, give me an arcana or religion check. Either one. Alrighty, we'll go religion. <laughs> I said he's a big one for that one. <laughs> 26. All right, you recall tales now as you think, having had time to think about it, and think there are a few somewhat blasphemous tales, legends from your faith that speak of a lair outside of life, life and death, where just things end. And that the creatures there, uh, while they are not undead, if they, when they, met, if they manifest to interact with the living, they are as living creatures. Okay. Um. As that moment clicks in, my, you know, the, the vibrant, kind of bright pink eyes of the kobold widen, and seeing the flashes is getting closer and closer, just kind of looks around to the rest of you and goes, ah, huddle closely, I will keep us safe for at least an hour of time. And I'll go ahead and uh, cast Anti-Life Shell around okay. the group. Your spell manifests as you reach out. The weave here is strange, it's cold and dark but you're able to piece together. It feels like you're reaching across the cosmos to the material plane. You feel for a moment like a god yourself, pulling the building blocks of reality together <laughs> to form an impermeable, bar impermeable barrier that no living thing can cross. <sighs> Anything else? I'm just holding on to that as hard as I can. Uh, we were told not to strike at the lights. And to beware of the lights. Yeah. So we're do you keep pressing on and ignore, ignore the lights? Does a shell move with you, or is it cast on a slow location? Uh, as far as I know, I think it stays uh, main centered on you. Okay. Yes. Got it. All mm -hmm. right. So you continue walking. And soon, after another minute or so, as the path moves, uh, it moves down slightly, the slope gentle and shallow, but going downward. You see the lights gather behind you and then approach. And you can see just at the edge of the purple haze, the edge of your spell, is a strange pale white creature with a long segmented body and a tail that narrows and ends almost like a scorpion's tail hanging over it, but rather than a stinger, ends in a large clawed hand that grasps oh. out towards you. On its front of its body, it has uh, a half dozen human legs that are propelling it forward, gamboling, it moves, gyrates, each of the legs different length, but somehow propelling it forward. And three faces, withered crones mewling at you, spittle coming down from each of them, and two long tentacles that again end in taloned human hands, reaching out, coming in now, if they are trying to interact with the anti-life shell, is it a saving throw, or does it just repel them out? It says the barrier prevents any affected creature from passing or reaching through. All right, so it reaches up and... <laughs> Blasphemous light, the three heads say in unison. Come, become one with this place. Let us drain your light. Join us in the darkness. Join us, join us. Checks out. <laughs> Live here in annihilation forever. Mm. For swear life, join us! Pounds its taloned hands against your spell. It quivers, but holds true. I've seen many terrible things in the travels I've made to maintain this balance between life and death. This is really messed up. <laughs> yes. 
This is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Clear the road or be destroyed. No. Five of them in total emerge from the darkness. Oh, pressing. Yeah. The <laughs> light flashes from their eyes as they look at each other. But again, the shell holds them back. Are they, uh, are they all coming at us from like the sides and the back? Yeah, they're basically going trying to surround you. Why they're is it worse that they have a hand instead of a stinger? <laughs> it shouldn't be worse, but it is. Just empower it's the Dungeon Master. Way man. It is <laughs> it's worse. I don't know why it's bothering me so much. <laughs> How long will your spell last? How long will your spell last? How long will the spell last? How long, will How long before last? we destroy you? Is that your question? How long? How long? <laughs> How long? <laughs> just keep going. I, I think we should just keep moving. Let them continue coming at us from behind. Mm. No. Mm. We will wait. 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 This is getting really annoying. Okay, let's start. Five. Let's start double timing it. <laughs> We're not falling off the cliff double timing, yeah, but yeah. we start double timing. Stepping Step out a little bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. How long is the duration of the spell? One hour. Okay. <laughs> um, Don't tell him. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, uh, I'm conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Tell so, ten minutes. <laughs> you pushing ahead? Do you want to maintain your sort of standard marching pace, or do you want to try yeah. pushing yourselves? We'll start pushing. Yeah. I think right. we're going to push the pace, not right. fall off the cliff. Push the pace. We'll push the pace. Why isn't everyone giving me a Constitution check? Sure. Con check. Just a check. Okay. Yep. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, 18. Boy. 18? Sorry, 16. 17. 16. Uh, for me or for my chimera? Uh, for both. Okay. Um, I'm surprisingly winded for sitting on top of a chimera. Uh, the chimera um, is doing really well. That's a that's a 23 for the chimera. All right. And that's a 6 for our <laughs> He's so just having a rough ride right now. It's all you push ahead. China, you see that these things, their misshapen limbs, are having some trouble keeping up as you push yourselves. Though you start to feel, maybe it's just the nature of this place, the two of you start to feel a bit weaker, but uh, your chimera, uh, out of loyalty, uh, is able to carry both of you. It turns and as you see the kobold falling behind. Uh, chimeras can speak, correct? Um, can a chimera, chimera. Okay. Very simple phrases in common. Or draconic. Understands draconic, but can't speak it. So it, uh, okay. So you see, it's looking mm. at the kobold, looking at you as if it's asking mm. growls. You recognize this growl. It's what a dragon would. The way it's looking at him is if a dragon looks at a member of the wing that's weakened and perhaps should be eaten rather than allowed mm. to. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I pat its head and just calm it down for now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, trust me, that would be very bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just fed, I say in draconic, yark, 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 which means I just fed you. <laughs> <laughs> right. The chimera comes down and begin pushing forward. And you see now you're making pretty good progress. These creatures with their misshapen limbs, again, they're having a hard time keeping up. And the path is going over now as it's the slope down is getting steeper and steeper, and these creatures are having trouble navigating it. How do they know this place, this, this place, this place? I hate this place. No hunting here. No good hunting. Horrible hunting. Horrible hunting. The, uh, one, two. All right, three of them give up the chase, and they stop. The other two, though, with their six heads between them, keep bearing down around after you. Um, go ahead and give me another. Round of constitution chains. Thirteen again. Okay. Thirteen. Right. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. All right. That's a five for Archon <laughs> and, a, and a fifteen for the Chimera. 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 This is so it's more than the yeah. two of you feeling kind of winded as you're mm. pushing yourselves. You are able to keep a really uh, high pace, helping yeah. each other out. You know, taking yeah. quick, maybe carrying yeah. the kobold for a moment. The Chimera is able to look at, to carry you. The, um, and the last two creatures break off the chase. You mm. see, again, <laughs> they'll be back, they'll be back, they'll be back, they'll have to be back, or they will die, or they will die, or they will die. And they turn and scuttle, clumsily making their way on their misshapen human limbs up the side of this slope. As you continue onward. Yes. Yeah. Gnessa. 
So that brings us about to the two hour mark. It seems like a good time to take a quick break. And All right. Have a fresh beverage, use the restroom, and then we'll pick it back up. So it's about right. wonderful. Right. Excellent. Okay. So we'll be back. We're going to take a quick break at this point uh, just to refresh and recharge, and we'll be back. All right. Great. Well, last we left our heroes, they were pursued by strange, fleshy, scorpion esque, multi limbed, not parts not quite fitting well together, three-headed, <laughs> weird, fleshy, scorpion creatures of utter darkness. Uh, though they trailed you and tried to surround you, mm. your cleric spell warded them away, yes. and what began next was a foot race of sorts as you raced across this strange, barren landscape, following the path set forth by the strange, purple-swirling mists from the thurible, and the incense within it that is burning. Mm. We started heading down a uh, steep a slope to start out shallow and became steeper and steeper. And the strange creatures with their misshapen limbs had trouble following you and you were able to power forward, moving at a fast pace, a pace they couldn't match. And then soon enough, after about an hour, almost an hour rushing, just as your spell is nearing its completion, one by one the creatures dropped away in search of easier prey. And now, as you continue plunging down the increasingly steep slope, the magic of your spell dissipates, the anti-life shell leaving. But with no sign of the creatures nearby, you continue marching forward in search of the god that failed. As your, as friend and foe, or mainly friend, foe more, just watched and hissed and squawked at you. Predicted. The hype man. <laughs> <laughs> I really right. wanted to ball back the monkey. <laughs> I, I, uh, if you would have hit the monkey, I would have followed up and hit the frog. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> got to work on this con on this communication. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing forward in the ground, increasingly steep below you. At this point, you're almost having to climb the side. When finally, mm. the purple mist from the incense. You see the path that slides ahead, levels off. You find yourself standing on a narrow ledge. Ahead of you, utter darkness, a void drops off below. And the mist curves to your left and winds downward. Mm. And you can see within a strange radiance like the, light, the golden light that illuminates all around you, of each of you, the only light you can see, the purple radiance around you showing a narrow pathway clinging to the side of a massive hole that drops straight down into this, the earth of this weird place. The path as you follow it, as you're going along, it's barely 10 feet wide as you're walking, taking each step after another. The ground here gives way from that strange gray dirt pockmarked with small holes to again that black stone similar to the strange temple that you first entered to find this place. Mm. And as you're walking along the smooth surface, you sense a presence, something, some object just ahead, cutting into the purple radiance. And you see, looming up from the darkness, an enormous bone. It looks like the bone of a gigantic forearm, nearly 30 feet long, looking above you, piercing the top of the 20-foot tall radiance, you see an enormous skeletal hand reaching up, digging its fingers into the bare gray dead earth above this place, as if a massive skeleton clinging to the side of the shaft, the bone dropping down into the darkness. Is the bone still? Okay. No sign of movement on it. That's a good sign. Yeah. yeah. So it's just this <laughs> giant <laughs> hand. Yep. Sticking up and out. And, and forearm. Yep. Forearm. Descending yeah, like, into the like forearm. Like a big arm depths. coming out of yeah. the yeah. side of the cliff, like holding on at the top. As if like its arms, if something fell in the pit, is clinging mm -hmm. to the side. But it's not moving right now. Not right now. Not right now. Is it ticklish? <laughs> how, <laughs> how far away from it are we? You're, the, where, where you are, it's right up against the side mm -hmm. of the pit. Okay. With the path. Pinned right up, up against it. Right. As if it's like, you know, holding on to the edge. In the side, the path yeah. just cuts in yeah. beside the arm. And your anti magic is down? Yes. It's down now. Okay. It's down now. Anti magic down. Giant arm sticking up out ahead of us, like some. Just distance. at the edge of the purple radiance. Okay. Are we. Um, 
60 feet away from it? Um, you're less than that. Less than that. Because okay. it's about 20 feet um, in any direction. Then I'm going to divine sense. Is it, uh, is, it, is, it an, is it undead? So or is it dead dead? When we reach your senses out, you sense the barest spark of divinity within it, but long since muffled. Divinity? Yeah. Uh. Is it the echoes of a mighty being from a lost age? I'm going to run up and poke it. <laughs> <laughs> I like your stuff. <laughs> Who carries right. the horn on them? This thing's not completely dead. Is this not possibly the fallen god? Possibly. Its corpse laid bare, but not fully dead either. Could be, this could be the final resting place of the god. Shall I sound the horn? Well, maybe we should just inspect <laughs> a little closer <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do you uh, tell us about the, the slight hint of divinity? Yeah, I did. I said this okay. thing's not quite dead. Yeah. This thing is not completely dead. So there's an arm, and it's down. Um, okay. I'm going to hand off the incense to you, and I take the chimera, <laughs> and I fly down a little bit. All right, staying within the purple radiance? Radius? Yes. Able to fly down a bit because it does extend 20 feet. Yes. In no, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. uh, you see the uh -huh. arm drops down further. But at the edge of the radiance is just the, the, uh, the purple energy. It's just utter darkness. Okay. I really want to get down there and see what's down there. Yeah, me too. The path continues to wind. You know, we could, we could oh, so it kind of yeah. like winds down. It looks like this thing's down a shaft, and the path kind of like winds around right, it. Right, yeah, that's okay. What I fly doing. back up. So <laughs> let's keep walking. <laughs> Good call. Cool. How wide is this like cylindrical? Um, at least from judging by what we can see in the curvature, if this was a perpetual curve, a downward uh, like auger-like spiral, how wide would we assume this would be? About a hundred feet. Hundred feet okay. wide. Yep. Hundred feet wide. Yeah. Pretty yeah. All right, Let's so it. it's got a shoulder span of at least 100, about 100 feet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, you yeah. begin continue downward. Yeah. The pathway carved into the side of this pit, raw black stone around you. Again, as you make a full revolution, you pass by the skeleton again, and you can see its arm dangling and its skull rolling to one side. A massive rib cage. You see from the eye sockets, blood drips down like tears and drips from the skull down into the darkness. Wow. What bits of the skull we see, does it seem to have a humanoid type structure to it? Yep. Okay, <laughs> so it's proportionally a larger humanoid skeleton. Yeah. Looks to be maybe about a 80 to 100 foot tall human. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> okay. That's what we got. And the blood is dripping out currently. Like hitting ribs and yeah. oh, oh, oh. it's just pouring like magically out yeah, of the eyes. Slowly eye weeping down. Occasionally the drip drip. Okay. It's fun. It's good yeah, times. About blood good times. Or tears of the gods or <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. Okay. Um Okay. Before we decide to even blow this horn, perhaps it's we continue and take it as much of the vicinity and know okay. the scope of our battlefield. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's knowledge is power. Let's go down to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. We'll yeah. see what's yeah. the, what, if it's we'll fastened it. or, 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 or if it's standing. Where's, what's the other arm doing? Does the <laughs> other arm look still look human as well? Um, is there any sort of weapon <laughs> attached to this thing or, or with the grabbing distance? So you continue around your next revolution down, you can see it looks as if it's hanging, as it reached up, grabbed the side of the pit, and is hanging down, its head falling down, its chin to its chest, and as you can see, its other arm is dangling down. And as you go down and down around further, mm -hmm. the next time around, you, the path gets steeper and steeper, and you can see its arm hanging down below its hips, you know, it's hanging limp. Mm -hmm. And you can see that on one of the fingers is a ring. Giant ring. Yeah. I'm 
Is there a symbol on the ring? It's just plain metal. Strange greenish metal that glints Green. in the purple radiance. You want I'll fly over here and yank it off if you want. All right. we, as long, let's make sure the third bowl is giving us some good, mm -hmm. good air there. And I will fly over there. And uh, I have to keep one hand in my spear or whatever. Yep. Use one hand and see if I can All right. break the ring off. As you touch it, it feels as if it shudders and goes loose from the finger. Allowing you to Hold easily, on. it feels really light in your hand. Okay. Fly it's, back and it's it. like that. It's a, yeah. Like a yeah. hula hoop or something. It's the size yeah. of a tire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're, sh I mean, it, and it's not heavy. Well, I'll tow it back over yeah. to the group. It's pretty light. Check it out. Okay. Any sort it's of inscriptions? It's just, uh, it's just blank. Blank. But as you Shadow touch it, you can feel there is magic in it. Oh, I didn't touch it. That's no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Important to think low wisdom. Man. And as a spellcaster, you can feel the magic flowing through it. It's reaching out to your soul. It feels like it's a magic item you could attune to. Can I use like Arcana to treasure? Sure. Uh, Twenty-three. You notice as you looked at it, um, everything within the radius, the, the purple radius, like it's a bit shadowy, right? You're kind of almost. Yes. And you're seeing that weird golden glow around all the living creatures. The zombie does not have that golden glow. It has like a black glow around. It, I should have said that earlier. Yeah. But this thing seems vivid and real, okay. as if it stands in defiance of this place. All right. Oh, okay. Any other openings, passages, anything around this pit? Or, I mean, does the pit end at its feet? Is it standing and um, grabbed up? Or does the pit, like, just keep going? It looks like it's hanging limp. You've only gotten about halfway down again. You're about to, like, oh. at its legs. But the way the legs are dangling, it doesn't look like it's standing. Oh, up. so it's, like, hanging, yeah. and the pit just like keeps going. Like it was going. falling down, and yeah. it grabbed, grabbed on, the and had a ring on the other hand. Right. What finger was the ring on? It would be um, curiosity. Uh, right hand, right? Uh, uh, yeah, because it was holding with its left. Yeah, yeah it would on its right. Uh, would have been on its uh, say ring finger. Ring finger with right, right hand. Okay. I'll communicate that it is a magical item that wishes to attune. Okay. Well, I mean. I can attune to yeah. it if we choose to. But that's like an hour. You're taking a short rest. Yeah. This may not be the place for it, but... The pit keeps going down and down and down. Yeah. Is this thing... Look, here's the thing. I mean... I think we should keep going down. Yeah. Maybe this isn't it. You know? Maybe the pit keeps going. I mean, it says we were supposed to go to the bottom of the pit, right? Those were the words you recall. Descend the shaft yeah. into shadow. Follow. Well, are we in shadow? Yes. So we are currently in shadow. We don't have to. We can, if we summon a failed god, where is that effect? I mean. I'm not satisfied that this is a god that failed. Find the resting, th find the resting place of a god that failed. This doesn't look like it's resting. Uh, it looks pretty active. <laughs> I mean, I not it currently, active either, really. but it was up for a climb. It wasn't Maybe. like we laid this well, thing down. I mean, this, fell, unless this was, was its grave and it climbed out. It was falling down and it grabbed. On and so it didn't fall into the pit totally, but it's been. You can make a perception check. You've seen enough of it. He wants yeah. to study it, like it's it's. Where it's well, I also want to see if this uh, thing looked like it climbed <coughs> out or if it fell in. Got it. Twenty-one. Yeah. Twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. With anything over twenty, uh, you can see it looks like from its position, this thing was trying to climb out of the pit. Climb out. That's it. Right. It may have either reached up and like okay. leapt up and grabbed the edge. You don't I see any wrong. signs of like claw marks right. on the side. Yeah. But it looks like this thing like reached up, like maybe as if it was trying to hoist itself up. So well, we go down. then it might, it might, but let's see what, what, what it was climbing away from. Okay. Let's I'm see good. what this giant, massive, hundred foot tall thing yeah. <laughs> was trying this, to get away from. This That's a tough. great idea. <laughs> yeah, so this exactly. hula hoop ring, <laughs> but can I like shrink it somehow by? You suspect if you attune to it, it may shrink down yeah, to yeah. the, to whoever attunes to it. I'm going to carry this hula hoop itself. around unless we take it for a rest. Okay. And I can attune to it. Um, you want to just throw it around the chimera's neck? Okay, sure. I mean, okay. 
All right, so I'm putting her on the chimera. So your chimera has a bitch and collar now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. play like horse it's like a dog collar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a chimera. <coughs> okay, um, let's keep heading down. Now this the shaft keeps going down, and, and this pathway is around. Now I'm just I'm flying with you know the 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 thurible, um, but I'm like close enough where you know the the you know the the outskirts of the light are like hitting them on the path. Yeah. Right. And I've I've got the I got the cobalt passenger on 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 the chimera as well. So I'm kind of you know I'm just kind of circling as they walk, like kind of as a guardian in between. Sounds good. All, All right. right. <coughs> All right. Down and down you go. Step after step, circling deeper and deeper. Soon you pass by this creature's feet, and you see them dangling. And as you look at them, and you realize now where it's plunging downward, the purple radiance, the path, it levels out below you. And you see the feet hang, barely the height of a man, between it and the bottom floor here. Mm. Also black stone. Mm. And you see the path veers and then turns off to the side. Like outside of the pit, like it goes around, like out of the. <sighs> Not much of a vertical. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's see where this leads us. Yeah. All right. Okay. We head through the path. Yeah. You follow the path onward, following it, and you see as you follow it along, suddenly as you take a step through, you see light. You're standing in a large cavern, about 100 feet across. There's a weird purple glow coming from veins of energy that undulate along the top mm, of the cavern sounds here. Big. And you see hundreds of tiny holes yeah. punched in the ceiling and along the side here. The cavern's about 100 feet across on each direction and 100 feet up. And you see the purple path dissipates so when you take a look back behind you, you see it's still wending out back behind you. Okay, here's a here's a question. All right, so do we take a wrong, do we not complete the step that we need to complete? And that's why we're getting this misty path, like we're here, but it's not really the right place to be. 100 feet up. 100 feet up, okay, and up, like right above, you said there was like, almost like, like like it's like purplish, like clouds. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. undulating everywhere along the, the walls of this place. Oh, and all, all along the walls and uh, of this cylinder that we're inside of now. Yep. So we're in like a hundred foot cylinder. You see, there are hundreds of holes, like a bunch of lamp, like uh, eel holes or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh. We're gonna get we're gonna get like negative energy eels punching out to get us, like, based on previous excursions. So I think we didn't do something that we needed to do behind us, and if we go through here, we're about to get in a lot of trouble. Well, I don't know what that here, was. He, here's here's the thing I'll throw out that's right. kind of looming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to try to attune in this thing and see what it is? Yeah, I can give it a whirl. I mean, the question is like, does it have some sort of importance? Do you, as a uh, extremely well-traveled and powerful user of the arcane arts? Can you keep a bit of teeth of knowing what it does before a tuning? Yes, so I can identify it. Oh, you can? Yeah. Do you want to try it? Yes. Just for safety's sake, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was, gonna, I, was planning <laughs> on, I, I was planning on doing that. I figured you were prior to a tuning. We're on the <laughs> fighter side of the table over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just put it on! <laughs> What's yeah, I would, I would uh, <laughs> if, if you'll secure the area, I will. Yeah. We'll get take me, into. It'll take me some time. We'll get into the passageway. <laughs> You know, like 300 style. We'll get into that passageway oh, yeah. between the skeleton shaft and the eel shaft, we'll call it. And we'll get in there and you can try identifying as soon as Matt passes me the gummy worms. Thank you. <laughs> done and done. Remember driving Miss Daisy? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, I, I gotta drive you to the Pickly Wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I grew up, yeah. Why, wow, Miss Daisy. <coughs> Andy. <laughs> so I will identify All right. the hula hoop ring. So looking at it, yeah. uh, you realize the metal that this is crafted from. You have never seen anything like this. Uh, it's not from any world you know of. Um, it seems to be similar to iron. 
but infused with the power of life. And you get the sense that it's from a very verdant place, but you sense the magic it draws upon, though it still is intact itself. It was once linked to a world, but that link has long since been sundered. The ring itself is a powerful icon of life. It preserves the life of he who wears it and wards against the baleful influence of this realm. Oh, I realize I just totally killed that giant skeleton by taking this ring off his finger, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Whoops, sorry. Well, he didn't seem to be idiot. <laughs> I, I didn't know. It wasn't malicious. My bad. Well, it depends. If we pull the horn and it wakes him up, it'll be the fastest battle we have to worry about, maybe. I don't know, <laughs> maybe. True. Let's see. All right, um, so it appears to be something that would maintain a life force even after great duress and negative energy and... It, you sense if, it, uh, if the person wearing it was killed, they would still be dead. But it, it will sustain the, a life force that is still existing. All right. Interesting. I mean, do we want to for, do want to fortify this this passage, and you want to attune to it? Certainly. Okay. All right. So we're just gonna like stand on guard. Yep. And attune. Get your side. All right. Um, All right. <laughs> you spend a long hour waiting. Okay. Everything around you is absolutely still and silent. Your mind just starts to wander as you just looking, this weird golden glow of your companions, the black glow around your zombie Romero. Yeah. Finally, as the hour finally drags by and you attune to the ring, it shrinks down and nestles around your ring finger and gives you the following benefits. Great. You regenerate one hit point per round. Uh, you gain a plus four bonus to AC. Oh, nice. Ooh. Your maximum hit points increase by one per level. Nice. You are immune to the baleful effects of this realm. You can just walk around in it. And you're also filled with a great longing. A name comes to your mind, Deldebaran. A world, an endless forest, a verdant realm. Clear lakes, rushing rivers, blue sky above you, clouds lingering. You hear laughter and joy, and you see a mode of darkness growing within the heart of it. And you see a great, enormous, 80-foot-tall, green-skinned being grasping a great spear, a living spear of wood, wearing the ring, descending into the darkness. I see. And never returning. This hero of Del Devarin was attempting to slay some force that was coming into its realm and attempting to choke out the forest and destroy this beautiful place. I can empathize with the hero that we saw in this, pal in this uh, pit now. I feel we must complete this, his mission. So if this corpse is not the fallen god that we were expecting... I do not get that sense. Oh, you do sense he was the creator of that world. Oh, uh, actually. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, I, I do get that sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He oh, strode it, mighty great. across the land, mm -hmm. towering over the small creatures that he cared okay. for. Mm -hmm. And after he departed, oh. you have a vision of some of them, scared but s summoning their courage to follow in his footsteps and then returning, their eyes, pools of darkness, uh, as they attacked other creatures and vomited up beings of pure darkness that in time drained all life from that place and plunged it into endless darkness. I see. Yes, this is a, uh, how this land was infected, this beautiful land was infected and overcome little by little. This is a very nefarious and evil place. But so our purpose here, sent by this Morgan kind, is to raise and slay this fallen god that is not an evil god and is not a source of this shadow, but is one that fell to it. Yes. I am curious as to how slaying the thing that is not responsible for the shadow is a benefit to Mordenkind. Do you trust this mage? <laughs> now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Mordenkind has never led me astray as of this time. But it is always good to keep you question things that, that come before us. But he has my loyalty to this point, and unless I see something that points otherwise, I would go with what he has said. Question. <clears throat> the pathway that we were in, to short rest between the two pits. Is it was it a tunnel or is it just 
Like, can I, can, you know, is oh, there it looks sky like a, above Yeah, us? it looks like it's t a tunnel. In your it's thing. a tunnel. Yep. All so right. basically you got down to the bottom of the pit and then went in through a tunnel at its base and That's are right. now okay. this cavern. All right. Oh, mm -hmm. and you do notice that as, as you leave mm -hmm. the purple pathway, where it was sort of yes. faintly extending out, when you walk back toward it, you see then it, it starts extending back into the cave. Oh, so now that I have the ring, I see a path. Okay, okay so, so I had to attune to the ring, and here's the thing. Here's what's going on here. So, if we're gonna blow the horn and fight this thing, yeah, we should do it from the top, not the bottom. Probably. And we should maybe try to cut its hand off before we blow the horn to drop it into the pit. We should probably also collapse this tunnel so that whatever is gonna come out of those eel holes isn't going to flood the other chamber while we're fighting this thing. Um, actually, no. Okay, hold on. Double checking. We're okay. I just want to ensure that we have a means of escape should things go poorly. Oh, don't worry, I've got that. Same. So. <laughs> so this is our guy. Okay. Fine, let's... Uh, Let's go to the top. We'll head to the top. Yeah. Okay. We're going to head up to the top. Yeah, we do. Where the hand is over. As we're kind of looming over it, the wings. Yep. To the chimera. This Holding is, on. It's kind of chimera. physical tension through the tiny cobalt body, you know, its armor and overcloaks, kind of looking back towards you once again. Malefinous. I know you'll fight for good. I trust in you. I just hope your trust is not misplaced. All right. I've survived this far. I'm going to take a swing at the wrist. All right. Let's do it. All right. You hammer your axe into the wrist, yeah. splintering the bone, and the skeleton falls away silently. Drops down to darkness. Okay. But you hear nothing. Okay. Whether it's the muffled nature of this place. Okay. Sound the horn. Well, well, Very okay, unsettling. but but I'm gonna like we collapse that tunnel yeah, the between the two. Like I guess. Yeah. Oh, did you also want to? There's a montage them? sequence of us <laughs> collapsing <laughs> that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be your best, you it's time for a montage! <laughs> montage! You gotta get the shit really fast in a montage! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Collapse in the like, tunnel! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect! Yeah, okay. Right. Cut back to. Okay, yeah, he's falling. He's falling. <laughs> okay, here's the bottom. Drops into utter darkness. Blow on! <laughs> Alright, I'll throw the horn to the. Vikings Viking, blow horn. Viking, Nobody Viking. else has blown this horn other right. than a blow Viking. The horn? Yeah, why not? Take a mighty breath and blow into it. And you hear, all of you in your ears, a distant ringing. It goes louder and louder and louder, almost painfully so, and then it ends. I say a distant ringing tinnitus, you cruel mistress. <laughs> okay. Big, tall, pit, chimera, flapping wings over. You feel the ground beneath you shudder. I give the horn back. It I, worked. I move back <laughs> off of the top of the pit over land. <laughs> is, is the hand, is anything happening with the hand? The hand is still in place. As you look and watch, again the ground shudders, and then dust bursts from the pit. And you see, almost like a movie playing in reverse, the skeleton rises up utterly silently, wreathed in black energy. And as it reaches up to the hand, the black energy flows around it. And you see pulling itself up. You recognize the creature that you saw. This and is now the creature, yeah. cast in utter black. Oh, it was once a verdant yeah. beard of yeah. leaves and foliage, now twisted and warped dead leaves, all carved in black. Eyes that were once bright and blue and glittering, now utterly black. And it looks all at you, its beard swishing down. What was once the great living spear carved from the first tree to grow upon that world, now writhes in agony. You can hear in your minds the shrieks and screams of pain of the dead of an entire world entombed within it. Let's roll for initiative. Right. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. All right. Oh, that's a good 
Oh, of course it would roll the wrong way. <sighs> okay. I might be last. Yeah, I'm not going first. Yeah. I, I, I think, and I think you did really bad at this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, well, I rolled a really terrible initiative, so. Uh, seven. Seven? Eleven. Eleven? Six. Oh. Six? Oh. Twenty-nine. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Our twenty-nine is up first. What do you wish to do? Can I see an eye? You can see an eye. I'm gonna throw a spear at it. All right. Attack <laughs> roll. That's a seventeen. Seventeen will miss. Oh. As you hurl your spear at it, Veilfly looking, it just seems to pass right through the inky darkness. And now you can see the radiance around it. You can see now. You realize. That is the, within the presence of this creature, wearing the ring, you can feel the radiance of the, the, the baleful energies of this place being pushed back by the presence of this creature as the life force of the world that was destroyed, that it crafted, are st- is still flowing through it in some twisted, distorted way. Uh. The spear passes right through it, hitting only the spectral black elements that cloak the skeleton and give it wonderful its form. This free action, I rage. <laughs> Going to beast mode. All right, beast mode. The um, it looks at you, and glares, and takes its spear and drives it toward you. Awesome. That's what you get for rolling a twenty-nine on initiative. Uh, Not bad. Gets only a twenty-one. Miss. All right. So you leap to the side as the spear cuts a, a trench in the uh, the earth. Beside you, you see the purple radiance flows out all around you, filling the area, warding off the darkness. That was on 29, on 11, over the mill. I will just throw a standard magic missile at this thing just to ascertain if the, the spell will affect it. Uh, I would do 10 points of damage. All right, the spell strikes home right. and blasts away some portion of the inky radiance that surrounds it. Three bolts of green energy come forth from my hand. And it turns and looks at you. That was good. Thank you. And strikes with its <laughs> spear once more. Uh, but it will miss. Presumably it only got an 18. Yeah, it misses. And that brings us over to um, on 7. All right. So are, are all of us within 30 feet of me? If we haven't quite scattered yet. Yeah. Seeing this entity rise, <laughs> and the immensity versus the very diminutive form of which I represent here, uh, I reach up beneath the armored and enclosed portion of my clavicle and uh, grab what looks to be some sort of a, a curled finger bone, close my eyes as they open, a flash of kind of pinkish white energy emits outward to create a holy aura on everyone here. So all of you, for the next minute, while I maintain concentration, um, you cast light, d- a dim light in a five foot radius, mm-hmm. have advantage on all saving throws, and other creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Oh, nice. What? Very good. In wow. addition, if, it's a, if a fiend or undead hits you, don't know if this creature falls in either, with a melee attack, they have to make a constitution save or be blinded until the spell ends. That's great. Uh, and uh, would that be the case if we're all I'm on the back of the, of the chimera? Chimera, thing, right? yeah. Uh, how, how high above the ground are we? Well, we, I flew off. Like when, when that thing flew down or fell down, yeah. I flew back over land. So I'm not I'm not high up enough to fall off and do damage or anything. Right. Like that. Then uh, I, I would probably use if, if I had the opportunity to try and maybe step off of the chimera and get a little distance from yeah. our main line melee guys. Yeah. Right. I'll try and do that. <coughs> yeah. Step back as far as my tiny little kobold legs will take me. All right. That's my turn. Um, does the disadvantage also apply to you? Yes, okay. all, all creatures in the radius. It is going to make its attack against you, but it will have disadvantage. Do we have to stay within the radius? No. And it will no, miss. Yes. Good. Four <laughs> disadvantage, only 17. All right. Uh, and that brings us over to Archon. That's great. Okay. Um, then I'm going to fly right out uh, ahead towards this thing. Um, the Chimera will. No, forget it. What am I doing? Um, the Chimera is going to breathe fire. Okay. Um, fire fire breath is a, is a. Yeah. Deck save. Uh, 18. Okay, you beat my deck save, but um, I get to do 78, and you'll take half. Okay. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight. Uh, Okay, 10 plus 25. 
25, uh, 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 30, 34 plus uh, 35. So that's half, that's uh, 17 fire. Right. And you see the fire seems to not have too much of an effect on it. It seems resistant. Okay, and let's just check. Uh, it does recharge. Great. Um, and then uh, Archon is going to frenzied reckless rage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, all right, so um, swing number one is going to be. Oh, uh, shit. That's, uh, that's a 19. That will hit. That, okay, great. Huge, yeah. 19. Second, uh, that's a crit. Yeah. Yes. Third. <laughs> Uh, oh, I thought it was zero, but it's not. Um, uh, third is going to be a 24. So that's uh, hit, crit, hit. So for hit, I'm going to go... We'll go third level Divine Smite, which I did some calculating while we were at break to make this move quicker. <laughs> um, that's going to be... Um, 88. So that's... Uh, Ooh, I rolled low. Um, 5, 10, 15, 18, 18 plus 8, um, 24 plus 16, that's 40. Do you want me to split up all the damage for you? No, you can just you can pile it on. Or just okay, because there's radiant, there's cold, and then there's slashing. Nope, you're good. It's good? Okay, then that's 40 for the first one. Is that, four? Is that right? Man, that sucked. Okay, um, and then the second one I'm going to do, for the crit, I'm going to go fourth level. Pump in uh, uh, for the max, which is going to be fourth level. Is it undead? Ah, uh, no. Aye. Okay. Then that's going to be, uh, it'll, it'll be 20 D8 plus 16. Okay. Um, that bad. Yeah. It's going to be um, 10, 20, 37, 37, um, 58, 60, 62, plus 68. What did I just say? 68? Is that what yeah. I said? Yeah, 68 plus um, 68 plus 29. That's 68 plus 29 is 96. 96 plus 16 is, uh, equals 106, 112. Okay. And for the last one, I'm going to do a third level. So I left. Okay, I'll go third level again. Um, and we'll go, that's going to be, third level will be 88. Okay. Thirty-eight plus sixteen. Forty. Fifty-four. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. That's it. So you hammer into this thing, sending shards of darkness flying off. Today's each attack, you see the writhing darkness that animates the skeleton and gives it that strange, corrupted form. Seems to fade, but it still maintains its shape. Now you use reckless strike, right? Correct, which means you have disadvantage, which means it's an even. It's going to cancel out. All right, on its turn. Oh, well, first thing, it's, uh, it's going to use a legendary action to attack you. So it tries to skewer with its spear. Just gets a straight up attack. Uh, but I get a 15, so I keep rolling horrible. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and now on its turn, it's first, it's going to attack. So it's going to four attacks all against you because you are the best target here. So it's going to be a 28 and a 22. Do either of those hit? 28 hits. All right, that is uh, 24 uh, piercing damage. So have the 12. 
And then it's two other attacks. Uh, that's going to be a 26 and a 20. 26 hits. All right, so that's another uh, 24 piercing damage. Have. And then from its body erupts swarms of what look like insects, though they're just hollow shells, like dead bugs have been left on a windowsill and dried. They swarm out, and four creatures take shape. One swarm flying toward each of you, and they fly toward you to attack. The Each swarm tries to uh, engulf each of you. So starting over here, mm -hmm. the uh, first I need you to make for me a charisma saving throw. That's 14. All right, so... Uh, you have an advantage on that from the Holy Aura. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is oh, great. It's a 14. Point. Right. <laughs> yeah, no. That's right. All right, so you take uh, 13 psychic damage, and then it's going to attack. Uh, it has disadvantage, uh, but still managed to get a 23. Does 23 hit? Negative. All right. Then over here, charisma saving throw, please. Advantage. Uh, 26. All right, so it's going to be 13 psychic damage. All right. And then with disadvantage, a 22. 22 just hits. All right, uh, that is going to be uh, 19 bludgeoning damage. All right. And then against Melf, uh, charisma saving throw for Melf. A 14, sadly. Uh, that still makes it. Uh, right. 13 psychic damage. All right. And then with disadvantage, um, oh, saves your crit. Uh, that's only going to be a 20. That is a miss. All right, and then Archon, charisma saving throw, please. Charisma saving throw with advantage? Yep. Yes. Yeah, because of that. Yes, thank you for that. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. So one and a two. Uh -oh. So he's got a two. Oh. Um, so that's, um, oh, my charisma's really high, so. Right. Um, that's a that's a sixteen. Uh, that will still succeed. So thirteen psychic damage. What? I yeah. see that your charisma is real high. Well, so <laughs> I, I have on saving throws. I have an aura of protection, which gives me, means it gives me my charisma modifier again on top of having a super. Super high charisma. <laughs> Take that table. That'll teach yeah. you to be a table. <laughs> right. And yeah. then the attack against you is the creature going to engulf yeah. you. Uh, disadvantage, your yeah. advantage cancels out, so just a straight attack. Uh, 26. Basic success, yeah. 19 damage. 19 yeah. piercing damage. 19 piercing half to 9. Yep. I'm going to take two concentration checks from the two points of damage I took. Um, but I do have advantage because I have Warcaster feet. So. Uh, first one's fine. And second one is 10, fine. Okay, there Plus you go, you keep the spell up. Oof. All right, then we go to back to the top of the order. All right, I'm going to, is the swarm still attacking me? Yep, it's still swarming. I'm going to put one attack on the swarm, and then I'm doing a commander strike. Got it. Nice. <laughs> does a 25 hit the swarm? It does. Outstanding. And it takes a whopping Whopping 14 points of damage. All right. And for my commander strike, you get to hit the big thing again. Oh, I get another attack? Uh-huh. At advantage. Right now. Right now, right now. Yes. Significantly better. Uh, that's a 26 to hit. All right, you swing toward it, and as you're about to connect, the swarm around you mm -hmm. uh, dives in front of the attack. You hit the swarm instead of hitting the entity. Okay. So it's still hit. Hit the swarm. All right. Um, and I get to add one of my superiority dice to yep. his damage, and I just roll it. Got it. Okay. So, I mean, I'm gonna roll more without a divine smite than I did with. This is like ridiculous. Uh, twenty-eight plus twenty-eight plus sixteen is forty-four. Forty-two. Forty-two. No, right. forty-four. Forty-four. Four. Forty-four plus ten. Forty-four plus ten. Yeah. What's that for? I get to add one of my superiority dice to your damage. It's 54. Then. Battle Masters, there baby. Damn, yeah, yeah. I like it. All right, so you cleave the swarm, dispersing it uh, about a third of its mass. Um, that was on 29, over to 11 to Melf. All right. Oh, and then the entity tries to spear you. But uh, does a uh, 23 hit? Negative. Okay. I'm elusive. Just <laughs> looking at these things. Quite nimble for a lot of Thank you. 
using Arcana, do they appear to be other well, undead creatures? More no, than there's some other. So that could be like negative. Yeah. Okay. Something beyond life and death. Yeah. As I recall, fire may or may not really harm them. I'm just wondering if dropping a fireball on us would, would actually do us good and kill these little guys. Do it. The, ch- the chimera yeah. did some fire damage, but it didn't look like it was... But, but it was at the, it was at the big guy. It only hit the big guy, yeah. yeah I'm going to try to fireball us. Yeah, man, fireball! Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to drop, I'm gonna drop, do it. I'm gonna drop ground a fireball. Zero fireball yeah, I'm going to ground zero what level? fireball. The big one. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a swarm. So let's hope that it doesn't take that much damage. Oh, fair I think I'm just gonna do. I did 54. That was about a third of it. So I'm okay, oh, oh, I right, stand corrected. All right. I'm yelling all this out while I'm flying. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'd say about 100 Jason, more points, Jason, buddy. Jason, Jason, more, bro. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> so let's look. Uh, all right. Yeah, ground zero fireball on us. This will be awesome. Yeah. We should be able to handle this. All right. Would your advantage on saving throws apply to this fireball? Yeah, yeah. technically. It should. Yeah, I'm with you. Alright, so we're talking about 8d6. Okay, as a base for level 3. Yeah, just it's only just one extra d6. Alright, yeah. I guess it'll be uh, 10d6. Alright, so now that. how do you want to place the fireball? You can hit two of the swarms without hitting your friends. If you drop it right in the middle, you can hit everyone, including your friends, because the swarms are like right on each party member. So yeah. you could kind of place it to get two swarms and no one else, but then you also wouldn't be getting the big guy. No, let's 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 get everybody. Okay. Yeah. Boom. All right. So I'm gonna make some save. What's your save DC? Nineteen. Okay. What is it? Nineteen. Awesome. Oh yeah. Success. Barely. <laughs> Not nineteen plus one deck save. Just barely. Ooh, it's pretty good. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Ooh, really good. Uh, Twenty-one. Thirty-one. 41, 44. All right, that seems to have pretty good effect on the swarms. Um, the fire washes over them. Yeah, I, I saved. All right. So I take 22. Nice. Maintain concentration. Barely. Because <laughs> it was uh, two natural nines, and I have plus two con modifier. And it was 22 damage, so it was a DC 11. Fuck. You okay. get a little bit of rope at level 18. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Real nice. <laughs> <laughs> and once more, the creature is going to try to spear you. It has disadvantage. I don't miss. The so entity misses. So there's a reaction. Can I shoot it with a magic missile or no? Can I recast? Oh, uh, you already cast. Yeah, okay. It's going to be a hit and then I can put it down. All right, and over here on seven. All right, feeling a bit uncomfortable with the presence of these things and what all is happening around. I will uh, cast a sixth level spiritual weapon, mm, nice. um, but I will send it uh, on the kind of on the opposite end of the swarm on my side, Got it. Uh, and that is be a three d eight plus five if it hits. So to attack it, uh, that is going to be a, a seventeen to hit. Seventeen will hit. The swarm takes. 20 points of radiant damage. Okay, is your spiritual weapon hammers away at it. Anything else? Uh, that was my bonus, and then as a, uh, as a, a cantrip to it, also right in front of me as it's being slammed in by the sacrificial burning dagger, I'm gonna go ahead and release a sacred flame towards it from the opposite end. All right, uh, 16 on the saving throw. That does not succeed. Okay. So that would be uh, 48. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Woo! 20 points of freighting damage. All right. It sags noticeably between the fire of the fireball and your spiritual weapon, and then wreathing it in flames. Uh, it seems to have lost about almost two thirds of its mass. Mm. All right. And then an attack with disadvantage from the entity. Thank you. Uh, we'll miss. All right. We'll come over to Archon. Your turn. Okay. Um, the fire reloaded. Um, uh, so please give me a deck save on the big guy. Uh, it's. 16. 16 just saves. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, I rolled pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a good roll. Jesus. Uh, 16 plus 14, that's 30 plus 40, 44 halved, so it's 22 fire. All right. And let's see. It recharges. How about that? Cool. Uh, so that's fire from the chimera again, and uh, and then Archon's gonna swing. 
Um, so that's going to be you know, frenzy, reckless. That's a crit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 19. So that's that's going to be a hit because that's 33. Uh, or whatever I have, but, uh, and then the third strike is going to be. Um, those are double 18s, so that's going right. to be a 32. All right, so two hits and a, uh, the crit is first. The crit is first. That is the attack that the swarm absorbs. Aye! Absorb <laughs> okay, then I'm just I'm just going to roll straight up. Yeah, because that's going to be because it's four. Axe plus hand equals four. The axe also activates on a crit, so that gets another two, so that's going to be six. Yeah. Okay. Um, ten. Uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four plus sixteen is forty. That destroys that swarm. Sweet. Yes. Good. Well then. <clears throat> um. Oh, actually. <laughs> I didn't even double the dice. That was, but it's, yep. yeah, we don't. More than enough. Super go. dead. There we go. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> super dead. Yeah. Sorry, that was only half the thing. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next hit, I'm gonna go second level divine smite. So that's gonna do. Yep, right here. Oh my god! I just got fireballed by Mel. <laughs> yeah. That's Twenty. Awesome. Thirty. Thirty-five plus sixteen. Forty. 51. Okay. 51 on that one. Uh, I'm going to do the same for the last hit. And that's going to be 14. 14 plus 19. 22. Uh, 32. 48. All right. The being entity shudders as you hammer it with your attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to wilt and fade, but it is still in existence. Uh, did you use your reckless strike? I did, so right. we're so even. So its attack is going to yeah. be just a straight up attack. A uh, little miss. All right, anything else? That is all. All right, on its turn. Uh, what was the level when you cast that spell to? The aura? Yeah, the aura. Eighth level. Eighth level, okay. So it is going to try to dispel that first. Hmm. Shit. <laughs> Good. No, it's totally worth it. Is it gonna, can I, if I die, will they betray me once more? No, the spell fades. Uh, and then it turns to Archon balefully and attacks four times. Oh. That's I tried, I tried. Uh, <laughs> an 18 and a 16. Uh, nope, I'm nope. Rolling. My dice are back to rolling like crap. I gotta replace these dice. <laughs> Dude. Right, come on, do something. Send dice to poor Mike Merle. Yes. At Wizards right. of the Coast. That's Seattle, a 30. <laughs> 30? 24 damage. Okay, so that's half the, half the 12. Yep, and the 19 okay. is going to miss. And then the uh, swarms are going to attack. So, let's see. You kill the swarm here. Yeah. So the swarm's here and here. So I need uh, all three of you who still have swarms are going to go ahead and give me charisma saves. And this Without is not an advantage. Yeah, that's right. All right. But, Ooh. no, nobody's near me. Oh, 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 oh. oh, you're okay. Yeah, you don't have one near you. 26. So. All right. I don't have any near me because no. I just killed 17. All, all right. 13. All right. So the two of you uh, are going to take, uh, let's see, the two of you take uh, 13 psychic damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, you take 27 psychic damage. Awesome. And then the swarm that was around you flies over to Archon, and you notice he does not make an opportunity attack, and the swarm will attack you. He doesn't. Uh-oh. Uh, does a 26 hit you? Wait, yes, his eyes. 19 yeah, piercing damage. Look at his eyes. 19 piercing, half to 9. Uh, and then attacks against both of you, so against Melf, uh, only a 15, and against our cleric, only a 15 again. Uh, and you see as the swarm peels away, his eyes... It turned black. black, yes. Oh, exactly shit. what I thought. No! Great, you are up next. So, you feel a calling to you. You feel yourself falling through a dark pit. And meanwhile, your body turns and flies straight at Ar uh, flies through the air straight at Archon as you're wreathed in black energy. He can fly. As the creature pulls him up towards you. I didn't you. know this. You hear <laughs> echoing in your, serve me as the world once served me. Jesus. As it pulls you up close to it. 
Go ahead and uh, let's see. You are a tactical fighter, right? Yeah, I'm a battle master. Right. So what kind of battle master abilities do you have? Anything cool? Anything that does lots of damage really quick? Deraging barbarian paladins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's use one no. of those. And uh, let's see. You're a fighter. Three yeah. attacks around. What's your attack bonus? I'm using the long sword. All right, so you're at plus 14. All right, make it, why don't you roll the attacks, because my dice, sorry guys, you're terrible. The, <laughs> it's uh, okay, I won't blame you. That's uh, two 28s and a crit. Okay, maybe we'll blame you. <laughs> <laughs> See, all I had to do was get someone else to roll the attacks. Oh no, he's learned a new technique, we must stop him. <laughs> <laughs> This is not good. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, they all hit. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And roll your, uh, your damage. <laughs> the crit misses. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hmm. Uh, Melf, what what'll break this? I yell out. Twenty-two. Twenty-two points of what kind of damage? I don't think it's just don't matter. So it's half. Give it a try. Plus another 18. Minus at half, okay. Plus another 13. At half, so that's, okay, so that's 26 total. All right, and there we go. And that is your turn. The entity does not spirit you, uh, because you're now on its side. Shit. All right, um, so. He, but he's close to me, right? Yep, okay, he's great. right up in your face. Okay. Um, and he, he, okay, I got it. All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. So 29 and over to 11 to Melf. Okay. All right. So is, mm. What's up? I can reroll a failed save. Oh. Well, here, what's what I'll, what I'll let you do on the top of your next turn. I'll let you make a saving throw. Thanks. That looks kind of special. All right, I will try a. I think this is bad, so I'm going to try 7th level Dispel Magic. Okay. So that's, uh, what, four slots higher than, than normal. So that's going to give me, uh, well, 10 plus the uh, plus my level. I have 14 levels in Wizard, so it's a 24 uh, DC. Uh, I mean, dude. Yeah. If, the, uh, if you want to keep attacking, I, mean, I, was going to I don't know if you made your mind. If you want to keep, keep attacking, just keep in mind, I'm a paladin. Again, yep. And all else fails, remember. Well, I'm going to try this, I think, first. Yeah. But not that kind of paladin. Right. First, I'm going <laughs> to try this. Not, <laughs> not the annoying con yeah. paladin. Who's always <laughs> I'll, try this party spell. I'll try to right. spell magic. Right, <laughs> seventh level? Seventh level. Yeah. All right, so you reach out with your magic yep. into a seventh level slot yeah. and yeah. easily blasts away the magic in your eyes. So you feel like you're falling. And suddenly you feel like you just come to a complete stop. And you find yourself, so good news and bad news, right? Yeah, you've broken the effect on it. The shadowy magic fades away. Bad news is you're in midair. Give me a dexterity save. Roger. Dex save for him? Yep. Uh -oh. Um, oh. Do I get to try to grab him you know, or the chimera try to grab Dexterity save would be, that's a, that is a 19. All right. Well, you're good because he can Thank grab onto the chimera. Okay, fine. Grab good. onto the bar a barding, from which you dangle from now. Whew. All right, but you have broken the hold over him. Uh, for your troubles, the entity is going to try to skewer you Thanks, again. <laughs> with it's ineffectual, well, to be fair, it's just my dice, so you can't roll higher than a five. So let's put these guys on the bench, and let's bring we, these guys. We have, like, what, six and a half hours left on this death ward? I'm just keeping trying. <laughs> yeah, thanks, so uh, Does a 24 hit? Uh, yes, it right. does. That is 24 damage. All right. Piercing. All right, and then back over to our cleric. All right, moving close to the side. First, I'm gonna use my bonus action to have the spiritual weapon, a heated dagger to try and spear the uh, swarm that's near me. Uh, that is gonna be a 21 to hit. That will hit. All right, 3d8 plus five. Uh, that is going to be 16 points of radiant damage. Okay. As it slices through it, sending the dead husks of insects everywhere. Is it just first thing? Still not entirely, nope, still but that's pretty badly yet. Yeah. Well, as I'm going to push forward to try and get within a 30 foot radius of my friends, seeing them being slowly carved away from this creature, I'm going to go ahead and focus onto my, my 
divine magic between the space of life and death and cast Mass Cure Wounds. Oh, uh, nice. At, at fifth level. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to do it at seventh level because I can't. So that's going to put us at 5d8 plus 5 to everybody. Mm, nice. It's okay. very nice. You could definitely use it, yeah. Yeah, I can use it, sure. Ooh, Ooh, that's wow. a good roll. Yeah, that's a great there. roll. Good. Is it 90? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Pretty close, though. <so. laughs> I think it's 37 80. points of healing to everybody. Great. All right. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's my turn. All right, it's going to try to spear you. Bring it, buddy! Uh, it gets a 22. 22 is my armor class. That works. All right, that's 24 piercing damage. All right. Dope. And then we come over to Archon. So you've got the sw another swarm around you, the mm -hmm. swarm that was following the fighter. Mm -hmm. There's dangling, hanging Swarm around, around me, holding him. The Chimera's holding him. I'm on the back. Um, uh, because I reloaded the fire breath, um, the Chimera is going to breathe fire at the swarm. Got it. Um, 16 saving throws. 16 saves. Man, you're, you're, you guys are giving me saving throws. You're good at that. that. Yeah. 10, uh, 20. I was rolling with advantage earlier today. I was running adventure. I was rolling double twos. Oh, so one buddy. Party fighter, double twos. Oh, I have an advantage of the next tech. One and a two. Like, oh, uh, I feel you. I feel you. Fourteen <laughs> fire. Okay. It is. Uh, that's that's the half. That's it. Half. Okay, it's twenty nine. It. So down to fourteen. Um, great. Now. Um, so that was at the swarm, and the swarm's still there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Frenzied reckless. First one is a thirty two to hit. That'll hit. Um, Second one is a 31 to hit. Both will hit. And third one is a 27 to hit. All three hit. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, first one, we're going to go. I think I'll, I'll do a first level divine smite on the first one, so that's going to be. Oh wow! That's the first wow. one is the one that that will be that will be uh, intercepted. Just so if you, yeah, at the swarm. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just so you know, but before you spend any spell slots, just so you know that. Fifty-seven. That destroys that swarm. Wow, that was good. Okay. That's big. Um, okay. Now we're gonna go. I'll go with um, first level for the for the next one. At the at the at the, the big guy. Um, Twenty six, thirty six, forty two. All right. Points. Yeah. It's like more math than I've done since high school. Um, okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on on the last one. All right. Twenty-five, forty-one. Forty-one. On okay. One. As you plunge your blade into it, the darkness surrounding it fades for a moment. Then it bursts now into blackened flame. The swarms around you, the dead bugs that had formed them, the two that are still together, the dead insects float back up into the air, reviving them. And it shrieks in pain and looks down at you, fury in its eyes. The, uh, the two slain, slain swarms do not, they are still dead. The two that you've been damaging fully reconstitute. The thing totters, it's the magic wildly gyrating that is keeping it animated. It looks incredibly weakened, but now is turning to full force of its fury upon all of you. Um, it is gonna use its uh, action to get the attack on you. Okay. So uh, did you, were you reckless? Did you reckless? Uh, uh, yes, I am reckless, yeah, so you get advantage. That's one will actually get advantage, and that's going to be a 32. Miss. Or 24, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shield. Right. Nice no. yeah. 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 Anything else? Uh, that nope, that's it. All right, so on its turn, um, first I will do the swarm attacks. So there's only the two swarms left. So charisma save, charisma save. Uh, come on. That's a cock die. That is a 13. Okay, 13. Uh-oh. 
and a dirty one. I have a minus one charisma adjustment. So. Ooh. <laughs> not in that okay. one. Not in that really? one. Not in that one. Dirty one. So a dirty one. A dirty one. Last little thing, but is the <laughs> okay. You don't see the so dirty first one very first. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Both of you take twenty-seven psychic damage Oof. and it's become wreathed in that black fire. Oh my it pulls God. you up the air, and they float up toward your two companions here. So then the swarms will fly over toward you, uh, attacking here and attacking here. Um, the first attack here is going to be a 25. That just hits, yeah. All right, 19 damage, uh, piercing. So have have to nine. And then on you. You're disadvantage to hit me. Got it. Uh, that'll only be a 19. Negative. All right, that will miss. And then the creature roars in fury at you, and it's going to try to make its attacks. Uh, it does have advantage, correct? Correct. All right, so four attacks. First one. Oh, there we go, crit. No. Yes. So no, that is going to be this. Uh, this, you, uh, this escalated quickly. Right. Forty-two so damage. Forty-two half. Yeah. Down to twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, charisma. Uh, the next one. Wow. Okay, my dice woke up. Thirty-one. <laughs> yeah, it hits. It's twenty-four damage. Uh, the next one is a twenty-six. Yes. Twenty-four damage. Oh, I might actually hit all four times. Uh, that's going to be a 29. Yep. Uh, another 24 damage. Thank you. Nice. Okay. And then we come over to your turn. I, wow. Shit. I'd love to help. That was nice. How <laughs> close am I to the big monstrosity? Oh, you're right. He's attacking it. It's right up next to it. You can reach it. <laughs> Get this thing off of me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You see its energy is wavering. Right. It's teetering back and forth. Awesome. It's Since I just realized I have a wand, I'm going to pull a birthday game. I'm going to shatter the wand over my shield, make it absorb the brunt of the explosion. Okay. So how much damage is the, when you break it, what's that going to do? It's a fully charged wand of magic missile. Okay, so you want to turn uh, set it off as a bomb? Yeah. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> um, you're, in the chi- you're in the chimeras holding you up. Yes. By the nape of your neck, and you take on your shield and pull this wand out, and you're like, <laughs> All right. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, why not? Hey, go <laughs> love it. Oh, so dire times, man. When do you ever get to see that? No. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's say that fires off all the charges in the wand at once. So roll for me uh, 28d4 plus 28. <laughs> 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 do you, you need some d4s? d4s? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Yeah. We're going to yeah. get some d4s. So I got one, five. Two, the problem with magic missile is... It hits on air angles. So okay. Over the shield of nice. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be an explosion. Four. Yeah. We're probably going to be I have, that's, so that's, there's 13. <coughs> so I have four here. I just need three. one more and you roll it twice. Yeah, so I just there. need one, one more. One more? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, Two, five, nine, <laughs> 13. It's going to be close. 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 28, 30, that one was cocked, 33, do it again. (laughs) I'll make a note of that, 33. Uh, yeah. It's just a lot of dice. It is a lot of dice. You know what I mean? Like, like I think like all the dice companies. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah, just thinking yeah. from a capitalistic okay. point of view. Like, yeah, higher 18. the level. They're like, yes. Yep, more dice. dice Buy more, more Yeah, the dice industry <laughs> just Six. goes through the roof. 39, 31. Brings it back 35. <laughs> 35? 35 plus 33 equals... Plus 28, right? Plus 28. All right. <laughs> Wait, it was 30, 33 was the 33, first 33 plus... 20, yeah. Plus 35 plus 28 for the... Oh, plus 28. Yeah, for the... Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 So I got 88, 68 six, plus 16, 88. and that's a 70, 146. Okay, give me a constitution saving throw, because you are at ground zero of this blast. Oh no, I gotta make a, re- I gotta make a reflex. Shield He's a shield master. master. Oh, go for it, yep. Mm. It's a 21. All right, that'll make the saving throw. So yeah. I am gonna say it's gonna be half damage to you. I take no damage. You take no damage. I'm a shield master. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So the Chimera perhaps sensing this plan lunges with their talons, maybe lunges forward, yeah, push yeah, the guy yeah. forward. As you take the wand and snap it in half, the creature looks down p- puzzled at this act. As the wand snaps in half, discharges all of its magic once, 
mi magic missiles shoot out in every direction, ripping through this thing, and for 148 damage, dispersing the dark magic around it, sending the massive skeleton contained within it tumbling down into the pit. The inky blackness around your eyes dissipates as the swarms puff into dust. All right. Do our eyes clear if there's your black? It's like a fireworks display. I'll cross the line. How far up are we? You were about um. You're only about 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 twenty feet up or so. Um, I mean, you weren't. Too, you were up above the. Uh, I was about to cast. Please, like, please remove the wand from your character sheet. <laughs> yes, I did. I already crossed like, it off. The if sheet. you were flying, <laughs> I was about to disintegrate somebody. Towards him. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. How high up were? Because you were still within. The, the, how high? How high up were you? Was the approach? Well, so was that thing? That thing was standing up. It was standing right. up, so it was kind of like it's, it, it, it kind of crawled up, so it's, it was about like 20 feet above the ground. Then I was I was about 20 feet above it, like, you know, just hovering around it, hitting it in the head. Got it. Yeah. So, and you would have been approaching it from the ground. So, Is he falling? Why don't you, um, well, you were in the grasp of the, uh, chimera. In the grasp of the chimera. So, why don't both of you roll dexterity saves for me? All I, right. I can fly at will. Oh, so you're fine. You can fly. Uh, 11. All right. Um,. Yeah, you're, you're coming to the ground, flying toward it. As you fall down, uh, you are going to take some falling damage. Yeah. Not literally, not the stance. <laughs> but you're on the take eight bludgeoning damage. Yeah, that's fine. As you land just on the lip of the pit. <laughs> you, okay, so he's yeah. not he's not plummeting. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, no, because okay. he had to fly off the ground. The thing was on the edge, so I figured. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, he's flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold it, son. That, that, that was so cool. <laughs> Yeah, that was close. <laughs> that was really close. Dude, ground I lost a lot of hit points. Below yeah. you Sorry. begins to shudder. And uh, servant of death, we need healing. The purple <sighs> path extends suddenly, comes back, the radiance, and trails a path back up the slope. Okay. I'm going to give myself 75 points. You don't need to. Oh. I'm gonna cast Mass Heal. Oh, fine. Uh, and distributing the uh, 700 points of hit points between wow. all of us, we're all at max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, Great. all right. Well, all right then. There you go. Good work. Thank you. You got a wand? Um, I'll keep my eye out <laughs> <laughs> for a new wand for you. <laughs> that's, that's your <laughs> mission B. <laughs> Find new wand. <laughs> All right. I'm real sorry. It worked. Yeah, it that worked. Was great. Following the purple path again. We're gonna yes. follow the purple yes. path. Yeah. Right. On you follow the path. You see and hear around you distant, distorted echoes, like a rumbling, and now and again the ground beneath your feet rumbles and shakes. As you follow the path, you see the lights as you hit the top of that slope and begin following, passing by the great chasm, again the ground shakes, a piece here and there falls away, carefully you move around it, following again, the great un unknowable mass, just you feel, it's so massive, you just feel its presence as you walk by it, it feels like there's a strange pulsing sensation coming from it, as if something that has been quiet for eons is slowly starting to awake. The lights flash in the distance, dancing wildly, but none of those creatures cross your path. As you make your way along, moving quickly, you find yourself standing. The purple radiance stops, and there's simply a circle. And looking here, it looks at, like at one point, ages ago, there are ruins here. What may have once been a 20-foot wide circular tower. There's a few bricks here and there scattered about, but ancient. It's been decades since this this place stood here. And who knows what force could have smashed it and sent its ruins tumbling. Okay. Um, I want to, I'm gonna drink a potion of heroism right now, which will negate the effects of my frenzy. Got it. Just, yeah. Okay, how far are we from this tower? Uh, you from the ruined tower. You would have like come like across it. Where like came right across. Yeah, you're it. right. As you can only see within 20 feet with that weird radiance and the golden okay. glow. I mean, are we done with our quest? I want to search the grounds. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any sort of 
I mean, structurally, is there is there anything below ground? Just you the tower. Sound any? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, it looks like whatever happened here happened decades ago. Decades ago. The dust decades upon ago. it, the few bricks that are still okay. standing. Any augury, commune, those may not work in our instances. Any divination? Um. I'm going to divine sense, see if I can sense any sort of, um, you know, any, any, you know, whatever creatures of evil around here. You don't sense any creatures. You sense in the tower itself a, a vague sense of chaos, as if this was a structure pulled from limbo itself at some point. Pulled from limbo? It feels like long ago. It, it disappeared long ago, whatever destroyed it. Sir, so who's good at history? <laughs> Not the bike. Anyone have intelligence in their group? <laughs> you probably do, right? Yeah. Do you have the best one? 25. Do you remember anything like this from any of the stories you've heard? Any of the places you've been? You suspect if this tower was an artifact of limbo and you're thinking of the creature you met, you suspect it was some sort of slod. Hmm. And who can tell what strange effects might happen? because of the magic of chaos of that place. Maybe this is the tower changes, maybe each time you come here, maybe friend or friend and foe move the tower to somewhere else, who can say? But from your sense, it seems if the path you, you're, you followed to that strange pit is the same path you followed. You pass the great mass, you pass so, the castle. So we should be at the castle where friend and foe, or sorry, tower where friend and foe were at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though it looks like it's been gone for 20 years. Right. So maybe some sort of true seeing or something else would shift us there. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm. I'm braiding my beard. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take out my gem of true seeing that I have in an eye patch and put it on and just look around and see if that that reveals any information as I look around. No? You don't see any signs. Yeah, nothing yeah. different. Okay, all right, take it off. Put it away. Hmm. 12 inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. Rocks. <laughs> Old rocks. Old rocks. <sighs> Unfortunately, my magics that would even delve into elements of divination have been expended. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's it. The path ends here. Path ends here. Fly up in the air to where. See if there's anything that changes as we fly sure. up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as a group fly up together? Sure. All right. As you fly upward and upward and upward, finally you see just at the edge of the weird haze the ceiling of this cavern and the hole, the shaft that you descended down and the rungs of the ladder. Okay. Oh, that's right. Wait a little for your forgot about that. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Fly uh, up. Yeah. Put the Viking on the ladder. Yep. Yeah. Climb up. <laughs> you climb up. I enter climb once more the black temple. But this I, time, sorry. I suspect foe will be in control of friend when we're here. You see that the those streaks of energy yes. through the black stone are gone, huh. and you feel like you're just standing in what any other typical, though hewn from black rocks, perhaps mm -hmm. not the most pleasant place. And your eyes have to adjust takes for a second the um, as your magic weapons, anything you have that sheds light, once again sheds light as you reach the top of the shaft. And that cold subtle you feel stuffy and a bit warm with the robes that you donned. The chimera snarls and starts pawing at the barding. He hates wool. Yes. It's very scratchy. It's itchy. Yeah. Well, let's get out of this place. Yeah, right. it's terrible. Let's get out right. of here. Yeah. yeah, you see as you pass through that strange fane, there's no sign of the entity that you slew before. It's gone. Rock, <coughs> plain stone Bless rock. You. As you head up the steps, and as you come up the steps, you hear a click, click, and you see the gruff man with the wide-brimmed hat 
holding what looks like some sort of strange metal staff and glares at you. And you see next to him, Kyoftum, clad in his elven gear, holding aloft a continual flame torch. Ah, <coughs> you return. Successful. Yes, we've slain the god that had failed. Your god is dead. And it returned. I used the amateurgy to turn my eyes the color black. The rifle comes I'm up. I'm just kidding, it was a joke, it was a joke. I'm so sorry. I would say it's a terrible joke. Should I talk him anyway? <laughs> yeah. Can't just what shoot Morden Kane's friends. That's right. That's a very important point. No sense of humor. He opens his robe and returns the strange staff back into some holder in there. Mm. <sighs> I never like dealing with adventures anyway. He turns, <laughs> walks up. Don't mind my friend, he's intense lately. Mm. Understood. It's that staff he was carrying. Oh, it's just some bobble he found in some distant world. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure Morden Kinney will be quite interested in conversing with you. Um, Shall we teleport or planar travel or astral travel? Or? The teleportation circle awaits if you wish oh, to use it. Let's use uh, it. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Better than expending a spell. <clears throat> Having to use this hand. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, come on, why not? <laughs> Give us a hand. There are consequences. What? What do you mean? <laughs> Crossing the bridge or flying across? Oh, I think we'll fly. Really? No. We're, the, we're the best <laughs> part. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. job, guys. Yeah. 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 You made it, but you died the pit. Way to go. Which would be funny if it was at the start of the stream. Like, ah, 10 minutes. I know, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Don't trust the bridge. And Malf is dead, and Archon is dead. Okay. All right. Fly across, land in the teleportation circle. Land within it. And after a moment, the runes spring to life. Pure, silvery, magical energy flowing through them. And again, the howling winds that whip through the Yaddle Mountains, suddenly you're gone, and you find yourselves cast upon the weave of magic, roaring through it. You see that swirling vortex of darkness now dispersing. The darkness just fading, fading. And as it disappears back, as the mountains whip past you at incredible speeds, you see it puff, dissipate. And again, back through the mountains, the high forest hurtling below you, the grand stretch of damned lands of Ayus, Rolling beneath you, the near div, the city of Greyhawk, and onward, and then Morden Canaan's fortress, and then you find yourselves within his throne room. And the old, the, the archmage leaning in, <laughs> looking upon you. Well done, my friends. Well done. I We're already sense now the threat passing for now. Yes, we found the failed god, and his world had be turned towards this force of, oh. a natural force of evil. And a ring, I see. Yes, I have identified, and this ring was needed in order to yes. defeat the one who had once been a servant of nature and good. The well, most interesting bobble, Melf, are you sure you wish to... I have a sense questions. that it will continue to aid me as I go mm -hmm. forth and do good deeds, good Morton Canaan. Do keep me in mind that if its mysteries vex you, I will be more than happy to assist you in researching its properties. As always. Properties. Mm -hmm. You sure you don't want to wish to trade it? I a spear of Orpal sword I recently come across. I have no need for such such items, although you are very generous. Mm. And I feel fortunate that you called upon us to right what was wronged. Yes. I can sense that things are better. But it was narrow it was narrowly won. If it were not for the strong arm of Odinson there, you got a all may have been lost. A wand. <laughs> <laughs> what manner of wand do you seek, warrior? Magic missiles. Ah. Huh. The merest trifle, the least I can do. Score. Kind of you see as a puck with the kind of... Thank you, good sir. Take care with it. Uh, if it does break, that could be a bit catastrophic, the magic with it. Mm. You seem like the type who might take a swing at someone with it, but... Yes. Uh, well, my <laughs> sack. <laughs> or those yes. who master both the martial and arcane arts. Right you are. Right you are. Well, Archon, yet again we have faced danger and come out alive. Mm -hmm. An unlikely pair we are. Very. Mm. But I appreciate your strength and what you've done, and however it has been shaped, and whatever Morden Canaan is weak for us here, you have my respect. Good and evil can join to defeat a greater evil. Yes. What god is it you said you followed? <laughs> the one I follow uh, is long dead himself. <coughs> hmm. 
I but carry a shard of the now destroyed old forgotten name of the one I pursue the right of. You don't say. But I thank you for your assistance. I have learned quite a bit. And even such enchantments cannot prolong too far this transition. Maybe another time we shall meet when our uh, requests are aligned. Or when it comes time to end your threats, maybe I'll guide you across myself. Give my regards to your god and my thanks. Well, should we piece them back together, maybe I shall. You, good luck on the choice you must one day make. He turns around and scurries towards the far corner of shadow before kind of almost vanishing into the pocket of nothing. Mm. All right. I'll extend my hand to Archon. <laughs> and I teleport away. Odinson. Melf. Let's get some meat. Well said. Well said. Very well. Until the needs of the balance call us together again, I bid you both a good day. And remember, Melf, a vorpal sword for that ring. I'll oh, keep that in mind, sir. Tell me at least I can study it. I will leave it upon your hand. If you wish to study it, of course. You have been... I will... I will... T I trust you. Ah, uh, yes you do. For that I thank you. It shall be returned to you promptly. Oh. Very well. I shall have it to you by tomorrow morning. The meat awaits. Yes, let us go. Very well. As you... Head out, taking more mundane means to leave the Hall of Morden King of the Mage and stride out into the streets of the city of Greyhawk, perhaps heading to the Green Dragon Inn to, yes. to lift a mug of ale, a mug, a mug of mead, and celebrate your victory over the forces of darkness. Huzzah. Good job, well played. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mike. And, and thus concludes our uh, streams from this year's GaryCon, but... Uh, Hopefully we will adjourn again yeah. at Founders and Legends for Mort some more gaming. Morton always you... seems to have need for powerful adventures. Uh, uh, yes, man. he does. I love this. The 18th levels continue. It's fun, man. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And it's if you haven't been to Gary Khan and you're a D and D fan, you are out of your mind if you don't come here. Like mm -hmm. it's it's amazing. <laughs> this is the best. This is my first time here. I've been wanting to come for a long time, and it's been amazing. It's the best. Yeah, it's awesome. We're That's very glad that you guys are all here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, man. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and what a fantastic adventure. That was seconds away from catastrophe. That spiraled <laughs> real quick! Yes. I, was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, we got this in the back. Nice. This isn't a problem. Oh, oh, God! Oh, no! Whenever half the party gets yeah. possessed by yeah, a boss, was just like, all yeah. sorts yeah. of yeah. Really I was like, I got greater restoration. You got to spell magic. We got this. I, I was like, this is no problem. No! no. <laughs> Christmas yeah. saves. I thought, oh, how how good could their Christmas saves be? Uh, minus yeah, one. Hello. Christmas. Yes, I have no Christmas. I've I was going high the, the whole time. Dirty one used at the end of <laughs> yeah. I've never seen yeah. a dirty one. I think yeah, well, the dirty <laughs> one. Maybe the first time ever on a stream that a dirty <laughs> yeah, one was rolling. Well. I've seen a dirty and negative yeah. one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That, that did great. go sideways. Suddenly, my dice woke up. They were yeah. kind of on the bench. Yeah. They decided, okay, let's both come back here. Yeah. Almost well, did it. With my cleansing touch, I would have had to spend my turn trying to. Save you all, and then use the the, yep. the 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 chimera's turn to try to grab you out of the air as you fell. So yep. it would have negated my turn, and I just would have gotten yep. pummeled by everything. Yeah, I was just about ready to run over and haste you, and all of a sudden I got, I was like, I would throw a haste on you, I attack so, it or something. All and it took. Yeah, we'd be we'd be good yep. to go. All it took was, was one was crazy yeah. son of a crazy bitch run. and a one <laughs> yeah. <magic> missile. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good. That was. <laughs> and I love it. Awesome. Yeah. the damage to zero. That was insane. I know. <laughs> he just curled up behind the shield. But I love that the Viking is the one carrying around the Wanda Magic Missile just so he can just smash so can it. Break it. Yeah, exactly. What's that for? I don't know. <laughs> it's a good club. In case of emergency. <laughs> <laughs> break in case of emergency, right? Yeah. yeah. That was awesome, man. That Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, you're the best, awesome. Mike. Thanks, man. Yeah. You're fantastic players. Thanks, and I also dude. feel like the more 18th level games I'm running, 
especially you know with powerful characters. Yeah. Kind of learning a few tricks of my own. It's my little boss monster, like pulled back in some MMO design a little bit. Yeah. There you go. The entire like, okay, and you get me near the end. I'm going in overcharge mode, and yeah. then you failed your saves. Like, uh, oh, I, might, I, I was like, oh no. <laughs> that was good. Man, that was good because I was like, all right, we got this thing, and it, you're exactly right. There was a pucker moment. I was yeah. like, whoop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. That was, that was awesome, man. We didn't see 315 damage in one. Was it 315 damage in one attack or one turn? But we recounted it. Yeah, it was yeah. like 323, actually. 315. We counted 315 to tell 315 sounds, sounds way cooler. Yeah. I mean, and <laughs> Our guns cooler. I, mean, I was yeah. going to keep doing those commander's attacks. Me do one attack and give you an extra. Oh, that would have been crazy. Turn. And if I could have got hasted, yeah, yeah, I would have pulled five around. Yeah, that would have been nuts. Yeah, I was going to haste, except I had to dispel magic because I mean, that would have been bad news, too. Yeah. It well, kept us on our toes. Maybe next time. Next maybe. time. Yeah, maybe. maybe. That was a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll run into friend info again, too. Oh, man. Hell yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah friend info. Yep. And I hope my chimera has an empty stone. More dinking in now. Well, me all right, well I'm going to be I'm gonna be there on July 27th, 28th for Founders and Legends Day 2. You are, I hope you will return to Dungeon plan. Master. I would be honored if you would join us in playing again. I would love that. And certainly, Joe. Yeah, we got to keep it going, man. Beast. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we got to do it. And yeah. Hopefully, I won't have to drive 95 miles per hour on the freeway yes. to get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was amazing. That was like that a was movie. crazy. That was like a movie. Script. I got out of work and I just I ran. I was filming yeah. that day and I went, I was like running. People were like, "Hey, man!" I'm like, "Let her gotta go!" And I just like <laughs> was in the parking lot, jumped in, hit the coordinates, and was like. <laughs> Down the freeway. You've never seen a car parkour before. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was nuts. Nice. Yeah, nuts. Ran in, people were like, hey. Literally, we're doing the countdown like, 60 seconds and we're going to roll. And, and, and he comes in the front door. I was like, no way. He made it. Because I'm thinking, all right, we're just going to roll without shit. him. And then the makeup lady's like, i got to do makeup. And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, screw it. I have no need. And then I, I exude I, my own. Yeah. And then the graphics on the bottom of the screen, I had the wrong name. Yeah. So it's like if you watch that stream, like, we're switching seats. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing all my prep work, yeah. like, writing, like, first level, second level, you know, all that stuff that, like, you know, hit points, hit that, you know, yeah, while we're, amazing. like, going. Yeah, it, was, it was great. But it all came together, man. That was, yeah. That was, yeah. Hell yeah. That was beautiful. It's killer, man. Yeah. I still, I don't know. I keep, these dice keep redeeming themselves. Like, just at the end of every session, yeah. they start pulling out the numbers. Well, the first one's the worst. Uh, we can research if there's an area that some place nearby you can get some new dice. Yeah, yeah. Might be some I think there might be. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where we're going. Those were yeah. deceiving. Yeah. It was yeah. deceiving because oh, they're twenty. I was like, hey, man, and then all of a sudden it's like you hit four attacks in a row. That was like, bad. Because you did. I mean, yeah. I don't know if the camera is capturing my die roll, but I literally be like, okay, I'm attacking with advantage. Okay, uh, two and five. Okay, well another attack with advantage. Oh, three and. Three, wonderful, right? And it just yeah. then wow. suddenly that yeah. last round, like, oh, I'm rolling six, I'm rolling higher than five, I'm rolling higher than a fifteen, and yeah. everything, great. Well, also, you lost the disadvantage, or just you didn't gain advantage, and you, know, you finally had advantage on, on me while yeah. I was doing reckless. Yeah. yeah, and that that helped a lot. That too. helps. Yeah. <laughs> How advantage helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many player right. characters can say they hit Arkham? That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, live to tell the tale, right? I and live to tell TMS the tale. Forgives you. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I forgive you. Dude, my but you redeemed yourself with the. I appreciate yeah. that, but he's like, roll three attacks. I was like, awesome. 28, 28 crit. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> These got hot, man. These got hot. Yeah. Yeah, the die you yeah. gave me for my birthday, man. The 20. That was hot, man. It was wrong. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was rolling good, man. Some good hits. Great. Yeah, you critted like three times or more, maybe. A bunch. Yeah, yeah. a bunch. Fun. Yeah, I critted once. Yeah. On Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a count. We're trying to downplay that. We're trying to downplay that part. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Beast. Yeah. My bad. It's all good. Oh, oh man. Maybe next time, friend info will call in the uh, favor you will. That's right. Oh, that's right. Because he did give us he useful gave information, some didn't he? advice to take down mm. a god and end a cosmic threat. That's true. Do I feel a story hook? Perhaps. Maybe Perhaps I do. Called to a distant city that sits at the center of the Outer Plains to mm. forge a contract in the presence of a Marut. Mm. Does, does Mordenkainen kind of now owe me a favor since I got no rewards for that mission? Oh, of course. <laughs> yes. yes. We shall he does all. Yes. He owes each of you. No, My no, agent will sure. be talking to you. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I BCC'd him on the. <laughs> and with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it a wrap for the well, <laughs> stream at, at GaryCon at Games anyway.